Calendar says it's almost fall, but still feels like summer here in South Bend. Temperature in the high 80s, warm sunshine pounding down inside Notre Dame Stadium. Glad to have you with us for the home opener. Paul Burmeister alongside Jason Garrett. And happy to have Zora Stevenson with us from the field as well. Zora. Well, Tennessee State head coach Eddie George says regardless of the outcome today, this is going to be a historic game. It'll be the first time that Notre Dame will face an opponent from a historically black college and university. And while Notre Dame's success is well documented, HBCUs are in the record books too. HBCU alum make up nearly 10% of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Tennessee State has two players that are honored in Canton and has produced more than 100 NFL players and seven first-round draft picks. Notre Dame head coach Marcus Freeman pushed for this matchup. He's excited for it and says it is long overdue. After kickoff, though, it is all about ball. Coach George said we are not going up there to be enamored by touchdown Jesus and the fight song. We are here to compete. Just in session here in Notre Dame, as you can see, the students happy to have a break, come over and watch the football game. They've been kicking off the season right here in this stadium since 1930. 95th one as Notre Dame playing host to Tennessee State, coming off a 42-3 win in Dublin last week over Navy. Jabron Payne, one of the five talented tailbacks we expect to see here for Notre Dame, back deep to receive. The Tigers won the toss, deferred, and so they are kicking off to the Fighting Irish. Whole season underway here in South Bend. And Sam Hartman, what a start he got off to last week. First start for Notre Dame against Navy. Well, he only threw as many touchdown passes for as he had incompletions, setting the bar, Jason, awfully high. Yeah, pretty well documented. 45 starts coming into the game last year, 3,500 snaps, and you saw that. Poised, composed, great presence. It was about the running game earlier than Sam Hartman and these receivers took over. He looked awfully comfortable. Yeah, 46th career start. His offensive coordinator, Jared Parker, said it was early, and I said, Feels like this guy's done it before. Yeah, absolutely. 24-year-old <laughs> under center here at Notre Dame Stadium for the first time. Toss sweep. Audric Eskimay cuts it up. Another cut. Out near a first down. He averaged six yards per carry last week. Picks up nine on his first carry. Eventually tackled by Jeremiah Joseph. So you really you think about Notre Dame last week, Jason. You think about wins in every facet. They're right back on the football. Sam Harton operating with some pace here. He's got three wideouts to his right. On second down one. Estime remains the tailback. We do expect to see four more backs here this afternoon. And he gets it, but he's in trouble behind the line. Breaks away for a moment, but that's time it's a Tiger defense that comes up with a win for a loss of four. Terrell Allen, all-conference last year, he is the player they need to show up. Yeah, Brandon Fisher, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee State, said if they were going to do one thing, we're going to do everything we can to stop this run. Dominant last week against Navy on this particular play. Fisher gets beaten inside. Allen makes the stop. Eddie George loves it. Notre Dame finds himself on third and five. And Sam Hartman finds himself by himself. Empty backfield coming up on third and five. Notre Dame completed five out of seven last week. Plenty of time. Keeps it himself up the middle. Enough for a first down with a slide at the 40. He needed five, and Sam Hartman by himself picked up ten. Paul, the biggest thing that jumped out at me last week was Sam Hartman's pocket presence. He moved in the pocket, found places to throw. Here's an example of him. There's good protection, no place to throw it. He understands the situation. Give him a little dead leg. Find a way to make five yards and keep this drive alive. That's an experience we've seen from Hartman already this year. 18th different stadium collegiately he has started in. 
First down 10, right back up the middle. New running back is Devin Ford across the 40-yard line. Four years at Penn State, limited opportunities, Jason, these last couple of seasons, so he comes over to Notre Dame. And we brought it up to, to Marcus Freeman yesterday. Can you play five running backs all season? Big smile. He said, we'll see. Certainly doing it right now. Right back on the ball, second and seven to the air, quickly out of his hands, another Notre Dame first down. This time it's Rico Flores Jr., true freshman, his second catch. As a Notre Dame wide receiver, good for a first down, he gets 11. This is Flores, another one of these freshman receivers showing up at just a little stick route. He runs up, snaps around in the zone. Hartman's on time and on the money. Excellent work by Flores just getting north and south after the catch. There's good balance on this Notre Dame offense. We saw it last week. We're seeing it again here early against Tennessee State. Jason also offensively for Notre Dame. Good mix of pace right on the ball and also not afraid to huddle up either. Estimate tried it up the middle. Now to the right. Stuffed at the 50-yard line. Tiger front seven throws him for a loss. And throw in a cornerback, Bryce Phillips. Jason, let's take a look at the honor roll today. Start with Notre Dame. J J Joe Alt gets a lot of attention as the left tackle. Blake Fishers is running mate on the right side. Best tackle tandem in ball. And there's Jaden Greathouse, the freshman. Two touchdowns last week. Terrell Allen, a big-time player up front for Tennessee State. And Josh Green on the back end is their leader. There you go. Out of the backfield underneath. Audric Estime left by himself. Gets out near the sticks on second down 11. Picks up eight. Makes it third down management. Just really like what Jared Parker is doing with this offense. It's run, it's pass, it's tempo, it's huddle, it's all these different things. And then you take a guy like Audrey Estime, you think of him as, as an eye back who runs downhill. You spit the ball out to him in the flat and get him out into space. That can be a problem for a defense. He was the top rusher last week, just like he was last season for Notre Dame. But he comes out now in third down and four. Jabron Payne, freshman out of Cincinnati, is the tailback behind Harper. And they try and run up the middle. Another Fighting Irish first down. A strong finish for Jabron Payne. Tight end Holden stays with a nice block, but that's another first down. Hey, Paul, last week, Notre Dame had themselves in the third and ten early on in the ball game, and they ran the ball. This is a third and four situation. Not afraid to run it to pick up that, to pick up that first down and keep the drive alive. And you talked about it being a hot weather day here. <laughs> Notre Dame is using a lot of backs already. A lot of pressure on this Tennessee State defense. So third down last week, the Fighting Irish were five out of seven. They start out hot today. Two for two here on their first drive. Play action. Again, flushed out to his run. Wants to throw. Goes down. Hartman rolling to his right, tackled at the 37-yard line for no gain. One more time, we get a chance to see Sam Hartman's pocket movement. They go play action. Doesn't like anything down the field. Again, Terrell Allen in his face. Hartman should get the ball out in that situation. Really like how Tennessee State's running to the football. You've seen it on a couple tackles for loss in the running game, and they're getting after Hartman when he gets wide outside the pocket. The Tennessee stage feels easily the strongest part of this team is their defense. Little hole there to the right side, first down and then some. Jeremiah Love, touchdown Notre Dame. Jeremiah Love averaged 10 yards per carry last week in his debut. First carry this afternoon, 36-yard score. Four different running backs. Watch the guards pull here to get out into space. And one thing that Love can do, he's fast, he's quick, he's explosive. He can get out on the perimeter. We saw it last week. We see it again there. Cuts back inside. <laughs> Notre Dame has a lot of good running backs. I'll tell you what, this guy's just a freshman. What a good football player. They like the patience right away, Jason, and the acceleration in that late cut. Notre Dame's first down, Spencer Schrader on for the extra point, right down the middle. Jeremiah Love in his past, Missouri State champion in the 100-meter dash, and now has his first touchdown at home for the Fighting Irish. Little bit through the air and a lot on the ground. Notre Dame has had the ball once, and they lead seven and up. Notre Dame football is brought to you by 
Allstate, you're in good hands. And by Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Temperature in the high 80s, warm sunshine here the first Saturday in September in South, in South Bend and the Fighting Irish offense. Off to a heck of a start, Jason. 10 plays, 75 yards. Jeremiah Love, one of the talented running backs, scoring for the very first time in his career. And Notre Dame scored touchdowns on their first five possessions last week and off to a similar kind of start here this afternoon. Yeah, the big takeaway for me from last week and early on in this ball game is the balance that Notre Dame has. Jared Parker, the new offensive coordinator, clearly wants to run the football, mix in play action and high percentage throws. Sam Hartman's been executing beautifully, but it's all about this offensive line. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. When you got four running backs coming at you, it's tough to stop them. And yeah, Dayron not get a chance to run that one out. And we'll get our first look now at the Tiger offense led by Draylon Ellis. So his counterpart today, Sam Hartman, is well into his 40s when it comes to career starts. Well, he's experienced as well, Jason. He is making his 25th career start, two seasons as the full-time starter at Austin P, and started 10 games last year here at Tennessee State. Now, we were told Davion Bryant, who has been in the program since 2018, would play some today as well, but this is a surprise that he is getting the actual start. It sure is a surprise. Everybody thought Jalen Edwards, who has been their starter, would be the starter in this ball game today. The senior Bryant gets the chance. Now for the very first time, Jalen Rouse. And he finds a hole. First down, Tigers. His former running back head coach, Eddie George, would be proud of that one. There is a penalty marker down on the 29-yard line. Our referee from the ACC today is Mike Roach. Take a look at the left side of the screen here. Whenever you get on the perimeter and you hold on, they're going to call it every single time. That's Trenton Gillison. You appreciate the effort. You just got to be smart at the end of the down. Easy call for the official there. Not the situation that Devion Bryant and this Tennessee State offense wants to be in. 14-yard gain wiped out, and there's Draylon Ellis again. We expected him to make his 25th start. We'll see if he makes it into the ball game today. Davion Bryant, 6'5", 225, senior. Got it down the road in Bellwood, Illinois, starting for the first time. They try it up the middle. Not as much that time. Wrapped up at the 18-yard line by the interior of that Notre Dame defense. Javante Jean-Baptiste, the former Buckeye, was there first. Notre Dame is better on the offense and defensive lines. They just are. They're stronger. We saw that when Notre Dame had the ball, and we're seeing it here when Tennessee State has the ball. The line movement up front, they can get off of blocks. A lot of people, a lot of gold helmets to that football. Second and 15, Davion Bryant yet to throw. First attempt, swings it out of the backfield. Good cut there at the 20. Another one gets him out to the 27. That's Jalen Rouse. Three-year contributor here for the Tigers. Solid gain there of eight. Really like Jalen Rouse, who's a versatile back. He's one of those guys who can do just that. Get him out into space. He's a good receiver. He's a good perimeter runner. He's also a good protector, so you're going to see him in, in here in these third-down situations. After the holding penalty, Bryant gets it back to third manageable. Third and eight, not an easy down, but they got a shot. Notre Dame was strong on third down last week. Navy converted four out of 14. Linebacker blitz. Buying some extra time. Firing incomplete. Notre Dame's front four with the addition of a linebacker blitz. Leads to that incompletion. Thomas Harper. Transfer from Oklahoma State was in there with the coverage. Let's check in on the flag. The call was against number 13, Thomas Harper. Pretty obvious what Al Golden wants to do defensively. Two blitzes here on the first three plays of this ball game in these passing situations. He wants to see if Tennessee State can hold up. Bryant had to move. Poise at the end of the down is critical here. Harper just got there too early. It's a good call by the official. Tigers have one penalty go against them, one for them. First, in, first down 10, 37. Good cuts in the backfield by Rouse. 
Middle of the field as he makes it out to the 42-yard line and gains four. Tackle made by safety Xavier Watts as he came in low. That's such a huge pickup for Tennessee State, albeit by a pass interference call, but just to be able to stay on the field and feel like you're competing with these guys early on in the ball game is big for him. And the offense for Eddie George was really the weakness last year. We thought a strength was the fact that Greg back their quarterback, but Draylon Ellis starts on the bench. Four out of the five starters in the offensive line. Brand new. Quick hitter to the right side. Good idea. We get out to the 45-yard line. Gain of four. That's Karate Brenson. Freshman out of St. Louis, a transfer from Ball State. Third down and two is next. That's what gives Tennessee State their best chance. There's going to be some mismatches up front. Notre Dame's defensive line against Tennessee State's offensive line. But try to get out into the perimeter. Notre Dame's corners and safeties tackled well out in space last week. Pretty good job there as well. Al Golden said the two best things we did last week. Tackled well, as Jason mentioned. And came up with wins on third down. Quarterback draw. This will move the chains again for the Tigers out near midfield. Goes Davion Bryant. And Jason, that's a lot of quarterback. It's 6'5", 225. He gets three. Theron H is the offensive coordinator for Tennessee State. And I love the variety he has here. You motion the back. You displace one of the linebackers. Then you run quarterback power right up in the middle of the defense. Rouse to the right side. Mills almost got him. He turns the corner and finishes strong right in front of his bench. Down to the 42-yard line. He gets eight. Some success early for Eddie George on the ground. Sure is. And this is Rouse. He's a good perimeter runner. He captures the edge of this defense and can outrun him. Riley Mills misses the tackle. And then a good, strong finish by Rouse, putting his shoulder down on Xavier Watts. Hey, we spent some time watching this offense yesterday from games last week or last year, and you said, hey, this Jalen Rouse, 22, has got a little juice to him. Sure does. And we have seen that already. Gant is now in. He tries the right side. First carry for the freshman out of Lakeland, Florida. And he did not find the same success. However, he did get just enough for another Tiger first down. Tennessee State using a couple backs themselves in this situation. For whatever reason, defenses get more tired than offenses do on these long drives. So for Tennessee State to be able to pick up a couple third downs and keep these drives alive, all of a sudden Notre Dame's defensive line, their hands are down a little bit. They're getting a little gas themselves. Third first down picked up on the first drive for Tennessee State. First and 10 now in the Notre Dame 41. Good play action. Again, rolling to his right. Chase fires. I believe that ball was dropped on the 20-yard line. Davion Bryant elusive and then accurate as well. Second time we've seen Davion Bryant move. They go play action. There's pressure in his face. He moves to his right. It's really a good throw. It's a high, firm ball. Davis has an opportunity to it. I don't think Watts gets his hand in there. Looks like it was just a drop. But Deshaun Davis changed his number today from 14 to 9. Second down, 10 to the 41. Notre Dame brings a blitz with J.D. Bertrand. He chases that one down on Jordan Gantz. Are you surprised to see how aggressive Al Golden is being? That's a game of three here in the early going. Yeah, he's been coming after him in all these different situations, wanting to disrupt this Tennessee State offense and see if this offensive line, four new starters, can hold up. For Eddie George in this situation, potential four-down territory here. This is that gray zone. Okay, it's not the red zone. <laughs> it's the gray zone. It puts gray, gray hairs on your head <laughs> if Eddie weren't bald. <laughs> Decide if you're going to kick field goals or go for it here. I think he's got to consider this four down territory. Take two downs to get it. Third and seven, Fighting Irish showing blitz. And they come. Bryant, just out of the pocket, fires. First down, Tennessee State to the 26 yard line. Bryant rolls to his right, picks up 13 to Shail Garnett. Been a common theme. Bryant moving to his right, break and contain. Pushes off from Benjamin Morrison, works back to the ball. Brian throws the ball well on the run. You can see he's accurate getting the ball down the field. And they're right back on the ball. Nice pocket to step up into. First one near the goal line. Incomplete at the one. Brian could have left that one a little bit higher. He did have an open receiver. That'll bring up second down 10. Again, he moves to the right. And talk about a missed opportunity. Excellent job keeping his eyes up. Ball's low. It was a scoring chance for Tennessee State. 
Kerry and Adrian slid for that just before the goal line. Couldn't come up with it. Good mix of the run and the pass has the Tigers on their first possession on their first trip to South Bend ever. On the move, second and 10 from the 25. Another hole to the left side and out to the 20 yard line. And they are finding four or five a pop that time, five yards to bring up third down and five. Again, it was Jalen Rouse. Again, I love the mix by Theron H. The offensive coordinator for Tennessee State doing a variety of things. Quarterback is moving, get the ball out of his hand. And they keep mixing in this run game on the perimeter. They got Notre Dame defense on their heels a little bit. With the success they're having on the ground, Jason, when it's third and five, you can run or pass. See if the Fighting Irish bring another blitz. Both linebackers come. Bryant, pump, floats it to the end zone. Too much. Jaron Turner, the intended receiver. And DJ Brown, who is playing in his 49th game, had the coverage. Yeah, big time drive by Tennessee to respond to Notre Dame's drive for the touchdown to start the ball game. Converted some big third downs. In that situation, we talked about possibly four down territory, but if you take a shot to the end zone, you have to come back and say, hey, we're going to kick the field goal and settle for points. Eddie George has got to be happy with how his offense has responded. James Lowry on to attempt the field goal from 37 yards out. And he's got it right down the middle. Eddie George has to love what he saw in that first drive after Notre Dame went down and scored. Uh, they did put up a touchdown. The Tigers methodically moved down the field. A lot of run, a little bit of pass. It's early here in South Bend, 7-3 Irish. Tuesday and Wednesday, summer's number one show is live. Whose million dollar dream will come true? America's Got Talent, live Tuesday and Wednesday on NBC and also streaming on Peacock. The aristocrat of bands. Many years, the number one show here when Tennessee State football comes to town. They've been associated with the team. and playing on a national stage. We look forward to seeing them live coming up here at halftime on a gorgeous, albeit pretty warm, afternoon in South Bend. Temperature in the mid to high 80s. So Tennessee State responds pretty well to Jeremiah Love scoring a touchdown run on Notre Dame's first possession. They come back and go 14 plays, 55 yards, 38-yard field goal, six and a half minutes off the clock, so a solid start for the Tiger offense. Low kick, Devin Ford, Penn State transfer. Big hit at the 12-yard line. Ball came out. And Tennessee State is a giant hit on Devin Ford, who remains on the ground. It's Tennessee State football. The fumble recovered by the kicking team. It'll be first down for Tennessee State. Jacoris Foreman. What a play on special teams to knock that out. And Paul, I don't think there's any doubt that that ball is out and it's going to be Tennessee State's football. Injured fighting Irish player on the field. 238 left in the first quarter. Notre Dame up 7-3. So the Notre Dame returner who was hit and fumbled there, Devin Ford, four years at Penn State. First at Notre Dame is up. He goes into the tent. And we look at the huge hit here from Zachary Drake that knocked the ball out. Now, as they showed this, the fans here thought that should be looked at for targeting. But there's no indication that that call will come forward. So it's Tennessee State football down 7-3. First down and 10 on the 12-yard line. Now we see Draylon Ellis, 25th career start, in for the first time. His tailback is Jalen Rouse. The in trouble just fires that one away to bring up second down. So Ellis, two-year starter at Austin P, was the conference freshman of the year, earned conference all-conference honors the next year, and then transferred in here, Jason, to Tennessee State, and his numbers and production didn't look the same. They went down from those first couple of years at Austin P. Eddie George told us he wanted to be innovative and creative. <laughs> he started Devion Bryant there at a 14-play drive, and now he's putting Draylon Ellis in. He clearly has a plan. Ellis was a starter coming into the season. I think he wants to see him play. 37-yard field goal ended Tennessee State's first drive. 
Rouse cuts it back, nowhere to go. Jordan Botello brings him down to the 12-yard line after a gain of two. Paul, this has been an issue for Notre Dame last year. Their red zone defense among the worst in the country. They did a good job last week against Navy. Two opportunities. They kept the Navy offense out of the end zone. So in this sudden change type situation, for them to get the third long here, if they can hold Tennessee State to a field goal, it'll be a big win for Al Golden in defense. Tennessee State on that first round, Jason. That was led by quarterback Davion Bryant. He's on the bench now. They converted two out of three times on third down. Third and ten. Steps up, slides, fires, incomplete. Just beyond the goal line, Benjamin Morrison, All-American freshman last year, makes that play. Benjamin Morrison got beat on a scramble in the first drive of the ball game, not this time. He has excellent change of direction. He has an ability to stick his foot in the ground and drive and beat the receiver back to the ball. Ellis was looking for Brenson. Morrison beat him to the spot. James Lowry, one for one moments ago, made one from 38. This from 30 blocks. Fighting Irish swapped that one down at the line. So both special teams coming up with plays here in the last few moments. Tennessee State a big hit to get the ball back, and then Notre Dame blocks the field goal. 7-3 late in the first quarter in South Bend. Smiles for Jason Onye for a good reason. 6'5", 295, junior from North Providence, Rhode Island, just saved three points. Got his big hand up and a block. And so Tennessee State, Jason, they recovered a fumble on the 12-yard line in special teams. They go three and out, picking up no yards. They get no points, thanks to Onye. Talk a lot about situational football as a coach. One of the most important is sudden change. When you turn the ball over, how does your defense respond? They could not have responded better there. A three and out. Special teams comes out there, blocks the field goal. No blood, no foul. Second possession for Notre Dame's offense. First one ended with a Jeremiah Love touchdown run. Hartman looking in trouble. Sacked. At the 20-yard line, Eric George, a freshman, and yes, he is the son of head coach Eddie George. Actually, not a sack because that's no gain, but dad still loves it. Yeah, look at Eddie George. There he is on the left side of your screen going against Blake Fisher. It's a challenging thing when the quarterback moves in the pocket like that. Fisher feels like he has George in good position, but once Hartman climbs, George comes off of it, and his dad is ecstatic. <laughs> That's the head ball coach and the dad. That's the that joy's coming from. <laughs> Notre Dame back to the ground game. Audric Estime, good game there of seven. And Eddie George was part head coach there, Jason, and, and part dad for that celebration. It sure was. What a smile he had on his face. And he told us he was nervous as can be for his son, Eric, playing in his first college game, trying to help him get his mind right, as well as getting the mind right of this football team. And he's clearly done a good job. Very competitive so far against the Irish here at Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame facing third down and three. They were solid on third down in that first drive, converting both times they faced it. To the air on third and three, quickly out of his hands. And that's a short game, just enough for a first down. Tobias Merriweather, his first catch of the season, moves the chains for Notre Dame. And Jared Parker, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, Jason telling us clearly, we have to get him going. Yeah, no doubt. We talk about the number of running backs Notre Dame has. They got a lot of receivers, too. And one of the most talented is Tobias Merriweather. Had a big catch for a touchdown last year against Stanford. That's his first catch this year. Good to see him getting started. Both teams have had their highlights so far. We've come to the end of the first quarter. The season opener here in South Bend. That's Jeremiah Love. That cut led to his first touchdown in a Fighting Irish uniform. Tennessee State did not turn that fumble into points. We head to the second, 7-3 Notre Dame. Tennessee State's very first trip to South Bend. Not so bad in that first quarter, a field goal. They cut into the lead. We head to the second, and it's 7-3 Notre Dame. Paul Burmeister alongside Jason Garrett. This time last week, Notre Dame was already in control, 14-0 against Navy. Different feel right now heading into the second quarter. Yeah, Notre Dame has to be happy with that first drive for a touchdown, but Eddie George has to be really happy with how his team responded after that converted some big third downs 14 play drive coming back they knocked the ball out on the kickoff yep. Notre Dame steps up and gets a stop on 
on defense. So this game has been back and forth. But if you're Eddie George coming up here to Notre Dame Stadium, you have to be pleased after 15 minutes to be down 7-3 and see your team competing and battling and not going away so far. And executing fairly well also. It's one thing to have a lot of energy. You would expect that, but they've had some plays that were executed well, too. Good cut back in the line of scrimmage. Arbor Castamay still rolling inside of Tennessee State territory. Finally brought down to the 19-yard line. And, Paul, that's the differentiator. We saw it last week. We've seen it early on in the ball game. Notre Dame's offensive line run the ball to Audrey Gestime, come off the ball and knock them off the football. He has excellent vision and balance for a big man. And when he gets his shoulder square, he's tough. And he's faster than you think. He's running away from those guys in the secondary. Big explosive run for the Irish. Fast enough to get 50 yards. Spins out of a tackle. Almost spun out of a second. Makes it down to the 15-yard line. Gain of five, and we're used to the power from big number seven, <laughs> but we just saw a glimpse of the speed. Yeah, Estime's a grown man. He really is. Saw him before the game, and he's just a big physical back. Comes from St. Joe's. Great program in New Jersey. He plays with that style, some grit and some toughness. He's big and strong, but he's sneaky quick. He's sneaky fast, and he has some agility that maybe you don't think he might have. I like how Jared Parker's using him and also using the other backs. Keep those fresh backs coming at this Tennessee State defense. New back is Jadarian Price. They swing it out to him by himself. 15 inside the 10 and down toward the five yard line. Wide open as he checked there behind the line of scrimmage. Catch and run for 11 yards. Again, it's a good mix by Parker. You're running the ball right at him and now we open it up. We throw a quick flat route. Throw back out in space. It's a high percentage throw. It's going to be a successful play. It's efficient. Efficient run of the football, efficient throw on the football. It's a good mix and good balance for this Irish offense. Jared Parker was there in the middle of your screen in the blue shirt. First time as the offensive coordinator. He was on staff last year as the tight end coach. Previous couple of seasons at Penn State and also West Virginia. First and goal from the four. Tailback is now Jabron Payne. Payne. Cut back, nowhere to go. Loses a yard there. Jabron Payne. Jabron Payne initially signed with Indiana, Jason, but when Dylan McCullough, who was the coach there, left the Hoosiers to come to South Bend, Jabron was released from his letter of intent and followed him here. We talked to Marcus Freeman about playing all these guys, and he said, hey, they're talented. They're worthy of snaps. And if we can keep these guys fresh, we'll make it hard on the defense. Now back to Estime inside. Hartman keeps it himself and leaps into the end zone. Sam Hartman's first rushing touchdown at Notre Dame. Just saw his parents applauding after he leaped over Josh Green. Hey, we just talked about Estime's sneaky athleticism. Sam Hartman showing us the same thing. You wouldn't think he's a runner. A lot of attention down and close to Estime running that inside zone play. Hartman pulls it. He's a competitor, knows how to find pay dirt. Love to know what he was thinking when he was straight up in the <laughs> air like that. Eight plays, 80 yards, ending with that five-yard touchdown run from Sam Hartman and the extra point up and in. Still all about the ground game. Sam Hartman goes ahead and finishes this one off. It was Audrey Estime's 50-yard run that led to that little flip into the end zone. Mom and dad say just how we talk. Exciting week coming up. The NFL season will kick off Thursday night when the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs host the Detroit Lions. The championship banner will be raised, and the 2023 season will begin on NBC and Peacock. Till then, we're enjoying football here in South Bend. The Irish up 14-3 early in the second quarter. Let's go to the sideline and check in with Zora. Audra Gestime noticed quarterback Sam Hartman's impact before they even started playing football. It was in the weight room where Estime says Hartman was winning conditioning drills. That's when he really caught the team's eye. Then on the field, Estime told me no matter what, you have to respect Sam Hartman in the pass game, which then opens up lanes for the running back, and apparently it opens up lanes for Sam. He's leaping now, guys. Hey, that was his 18th career rushing touchdown. He'll always remember that. First one <laughs> in Notre Dame and the first one he went head over heels for here 
wearing tan in the blue and gold. Yeah, like a young Randall Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> and Tennessee State will begin first down and 10. On the 25. You know, talking to coaches during the week, talking to multiple teammates about Sam Hartman, I went back through my notes, Jason, and two words came up the most, calm and poised. Yeah, and you see that in his play. We've talked about, hey, 46 starts as a college quarterback. He's played a lot of snaps. We all get that. But he also has that demeanor about him. So he has a veteran presence. He's got a lot of experience. But I think that's his personality. It's contagious throughout this football team. They're going to respond to adversity and just go back to work. And I think his preparation and how he's won over his teammates is going to be big for them throughout this season. Sam Hartman's been the only guy quarterback today early for Notre Dame. Draylon Ellis has played for Tennessee State. Davion Bryant, who started the game, is back in now. Quick hitter going absolutely nowhere. Stopped at the 22-yard line for a loss of three. Thomas Harper played 42 games at Oklahoma State. There to make the tackle. Perimeter tackling has been impressive for Notre Dame. Okay, here's Harper right in the middle of your screen here. The transfer from Oklahoma State. The first thing he does is he contains the play. He gets to the outside. He keeps his left shoulder free, and then he goes and makes the play after that for a tackle for loss. Davion Bryant started the game, second series that he's played in. Play action, back foot, floats it way down the middle in trouble. Diving interception, Ramon Henderson. Howard Cross with the pressure on Bryant that led to the air and throw. Now we do have a penalty marker down at the 19 yard line. Hold it, offense number 51. That's on please decline. Defensive take those out for play. Interception for first down. The matchup that Tennessee State was most concerned about in this ball game was the defensive line of Notre Dame against their offensive line. Pressure in his face. Ill advised throw by Bryant. Henderson is just in the middle of the field and he goes and gets it. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. Bryant just lays the ball up there. Dayron Johnson has no chance. Howard Cross providing the pressure inside. Bad decision by Bryant. The Irish cash in. Both returning players here for Notre Dame. Howard Cross been around for a while, 40th game. He had the pressure. Ramon Henderson, like a center fielder, second career interception. Right back to the offense, already leading 14 to 3. Jeremiah Love has a touchdown run. Sam Hartman has one as well. Jaden Thomas, first catch. Hit low, keeps his feet as he gets out to the 50-yard line. Had four receptions last week against Navy. First one today goes for seven. Love that left tackle, Joe Alt, showing his athleticism. Excellent protector, but also showing his ability to get out into space. It's just a quick screen outside. Watch Alt make the initial block outside to give Thomas a chance to get up inside and make a big game. I like the question you asked Joe Alt yesterday when we sat down with him. You said, what's the best thing you do? And he really thought about it for a couple of counts. And he said, use my athleticism to my advantage. Doesn't help. Doesn't hurt when you're 6'8", 320 either. Yeah, running out there in space. <laughs> I love drilled in the backfield that time. And a blitz came in, and that was Ahmad Nelson as soon as Love touched the ball. Dropped for a loss of three. Just continuing on Alt there. Darius Harper, the corner, when you, you see a guy who's 6'8", 315, running at you, you're going to head for the ground as well. Good look at Ahmad Nelson inside. Hitting the gap. Creating a third and fourth situation for Notre Dame. Let's see if Tennessee State can get off the field here. Notre Dame so far, perfect three out of three on third down. Tailback just to the right of Hartman is Jabron Payne. Blitz, pocket, wide open Thomas. First down and then some down the far side. Good cuts. Catch and run, Jaden Thomas down to the 24-yard line. Gain of 23 yards, nice block, Mitchell Evans. Starts with protection up front. It's just a drag route across the field. There was pressure. Notre Dame picks it up. Hartman calm in the pressure. Puts the ball between the eight and the three. Sneaky good athlete Thomas after the catch. Back to the air. Another great pocket near the end zone. This Tyree dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame.
Chris Tyree is a former running back. He's converted to wide receiver. And he's shown the Notre Dame faithful what he can do. He's inside and he runs a corner route. Again, protection is clean. Colsey clears it out. Tyree runs out of it. One more time, Sam Hartman's on the money. And once Tyree gets in his hands, he knows how to find that pylon. I'm going to one up your call and protection is clean. I'm going to say protection <laughs> was magnificent. Yeah, pretty magnificent. Hey, Sam Hartman. Let you know what he's done here after the extra point. Spencer Schrader up and in. And after Hartman had only four incompletions last week, we do have a penalty marker down on the two yard line. So Marcus Freeman will wait and see what it is. We'll check in as well. Offside. Defense from a 95. That penalty's declined. The try is good. Time out. Sam Hartman. How good is seven out of seven? The one touchdown, thanks to the catch and the dive from Chris Tyree. Fighting Irish up 21 to three. Big Ten football on NBC and Peacock. The premiere of Big Ten Saturday night kicks off next, right here on NBC and Peacock, with West Virginia taking on number seven, Penn State, in Happy Valley. Met with Notre Dame head coach Marcus Freeman in August. I said, after Audric Estime, if you were defensive coordinator, who would concern you the most? He said, my old running back is now playing slot receiver. That's Chris Tyree. Just scored a touchdown to put Notre Dame up 21-3. Tyree was part of the three-headed monster from last year with Estime and Logan Diggs, but he was used as a space player, and they just made the move to receiver, playing mostly in the slot, and he has an excellent feel for doing it. We saw it right there. From the three-yard line, Dayron Johnson right up the middle, down at the 21. Let's go to the sideline and check in with Zorn. Running back Devin Ford is now out for the rest of this game. He walked to the Notre Dame locker room on his own, but that was after being in the tent for almost 30 minutes. Zora, thank you. And there we see what happened there. The big hit that happened earlier in the first half. The ball came out, went into the tents, and as Zora just let us know, he will not come back. And coming back in at quarterback for Tennessee State, Draylon Ellis. They've been alternating quarterbacks between Ellis and Davion Bryant, who started. Uh, since Tennessee State kicked that field goal at the end of their first drive, where they were moving along pretty well, they've had six plays for a total of negative three yards. Jordan Gantz gets on the positive side, but not by much. Picks up a couple. Al Golden, defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, back for his second season, Jason. It was interesting talking to him and also Marcus Freeman yesterday about the advantages of being back for a second year. He came from the NFL. He had a difficult system to learn, a lot of new terminology, and comes back for a second year, and a lot of the key players are back. They understand what he's doing much, much better. Second down eight. Another linebacker blitz. Back foot completion. Out across the 25 yard line goes Jordan Gantz to bring up third down short after a gain of four. Clarence Lewis made the tackle. There's pressure here from the left side of the of the offense. They bring Kaiser. They bring Jalen Sneed. Good job by Ellis getting the ball out of his hand. Jordan Gantz makes one miss and makes this thing third manageable. Al Golden bringing pressure throughout this ball game. Tennessee State's done a decent job handling it. And Jason, they're showing pressure again on third and five. Linebackers turn. Pump fake. Throw. Notre Dame defense with the rush and the coverage coming through there. Al Golden, Marcus Freeman, they talk about clarity equals velocity. If you're clear on what you're supposed to do, you can play faster. That's been a big emphasis for this defense. We saw it last week against Navy. We're seeing it here. I think Al Golden pared the defense down a little bit. It is the second season. Nine senior starters on this Notre Dame defense. They're pretty clear, and they're also playing with great velocity. Uh, Ellis had to feel that when he's only six feet, 175. Punt is away. Chris Tyree just scored the most recent touchdown. Fair catch will let that one bounce. And the Fighting Irish will have very good field position here, starting just on their side of the 50 on the 48-yard line. Halfway through the second quarter, Notre Dame's home opener of the 2023 season. Leading 21-3, there is Joe Alt. We take a look at this offensive line. Coogan at guard, Zeke Carell at guard, Rocco Spindler to the right, and then Blake Fisher 
interesting mix of experience and also brand new. The new comes at guard. It's working. Notre Dame averaging nine and a half yards per play. Little play action. Still looking. Now firing an incomplete Rico Flores Jr., the true freshman receiver, was the nearest one. So on that offensive line, Jason, you've got all kinds of experience out wide. Zeke Carell, the center, also 23 starts. But Joe Rudolph, the new offensive line coach, has brand new players at guard. He sure does. Great history and tradition of the offensive line here at Notre Dame. And they love their bookend tackles. Carell's the veteran, but there were some concerns. Coogan, the left guard. Rocco Spindler, the right guard. These guys hadn't started games at Notre Dame before. They've showed up well here the first game and a half for Notre Dame. And I think the experience of both the tackles and the center have helped those guys in their transition. You're thinking about the help at center for Joe Rudolph. He played offensive line at Wisconsin, was offensive coordinator there as well. And Zeke Carell at center, Jason, has 23 career starts. It's a nice place to start. All, also 23 career starts. And we'll see what happens here on third and 10. But Carell told me this week, yeah, Hartman's calm and poised. He's also a lot of fun in the huddle. Gets rid of the ball quickly, too. Those offensive linemen love that. They like that one. Out of his hand this time over the middle. Jaden Thomas at the 30. Pretty connection there down to the 29. Darius Harper with the coverage. But that is Hartman to Thomas for 23 yards. Hey, it's a deep in cut, and it takes a little time to develop. And you see Hartman. He kind of settles, he takes a hitch, he takes another hitch. He has confidence in those big guys up front, allowing Thomas to clear him there, the high firm ball. You love a big receiver like Thomas who's gonna extend and pluck like that. Big third down conversion for the Irish. Hey, from the first time I started watching Sam Hartman, Jason, I love how comfortable he is in the pocket. No panic, doesn't need a lot of room, always looks like he's in control. First and 10 on the 30. Notre Dame now five out of five on third down, by the way. First down, sideline shot, too much. Mitchell Evans, top returning tight end on this team, dive. No good to bring up second down 10. Brandon Fisher, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee State, said, hey, we got to stop this run, and we're going to hang our guys out a little bit and play some man-to-man -man coverage. Good look at it there. Notre Dame was trying to take a shot. They scored on a double post. Two guys running post plays last week to Thomas in Dublin. They tried to get the wheel route, the route up the sideline off of it. Tennessee State wasn't having it. Hartman started seven out of seven, but just one out of four on this drive. Jeremiah Love following his blockers. Had a touchdown run early in the first quarter, and this time gets out to the 22-yard line. James Green, who is 25 years old and playing his seventh year of college football with the stop. Love scored a touchdown going to the right the first time. Now he's going back to the left. Love those pulling guards. That's what Coogan and Spindler do best. Blocking out in space. Coogan kicks out. Love cuts it up inside. Jabron Payne as they continue to rotate in tailbacks. Again, as Zora told us, Devin Ford is out for the rest of the game. But Payne picks up a first down. Fighting Irish are now six out of six on third down. How many running backs do these guys got? It's ridiculous. They come at you in waves. Again, a hot day, keeping them fresh. It starts with those guys up front, but when you got fresh backs coming, tell you what, it'll wear you out. Payne's got a little, he's got a little quickness to him. He's a smooth back. But don't be deceived. He's strong too at the end of the down. Right side. Good spin to the 10. The impressive run down to the five-yard line. Broke out of a tackle to set up first down and goal from just inside the five. That's what we're talking about. He's low to the ground. He's five foot nine, but he plays low. His center of gravity is low. His pads are low. Guys bounce off of him. He's got excellent balance. Offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage, but a big-time run by Payne. Notre Dame already with touchdowns from Jeremiah Love. Sam Hartman on a dive into the end zone. And Chris Tyree with a touchdown catch. Great position here now, first and goal from the five. Estime breaks one tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Well, some guys are just excellent. Red zone runners. One of the all time greats was Marcus Allen. He just had a nose and a feel for it. Audric Estime has a similar feel for the end zone. He's big and strong. He knows how to cut and get north and south. And he's just 
His lower body strength and power is just hard to tackle. One more time finding the end zone for the Irish. 5'11", 227 coming at you there inside the five. Tough to stop for any team. And he's all at 227. <laughs> when you see him on the field, he looks more like 237, doesn't he? He sure does. Notre Dame has had four players score touchdowns. The most recent is big number seven. Breaks one tackle, gets across the strike. And Notre Dame leads by 25. Pretty close to halftime here in South Bend. 517 left in the second quarter. Notre Dame up 28 lead. Looking ahead to halftime. Bria, Joshua, Matt, and Michael. They're in Happy Valley. They'll help recap the first half. How about Deion Sanders at CU? Prime Home time. to TCU <laughs> and pulling off the upset. Take oh, a close look at that. <laughs> Thinking about the Big Ten, also some heroics at Purdue. That is just amazing with all the hype and excitement he created to also get that win. Dayron Johnson. Find some opening left side. Still going. Johnson inside of Fighting Irish territory down to the 38 yard line. Watch the lateral quickness of Davion Johnson. He makes the cut to his left once, he makes another one. He picks up a blocker. There's patience at the end of the down and a strong finish. Eddie George's bunch, they ain't going away now. They're going to keep fighting and battling, scratching and clawing. Big time return for Tennessee State. The Tennessee State started out pretty well. They gave up a touchdown right away to Notre Dame, but they came down, picked up first downs, kicked a field goal. It was 7-3. They missed a short field goal. It was blocked. Could have made it 7-6. It's been all Notre Dame since. See if they can get a little back here before halftime. This is Gant, tackled by a host of Notre Dame defenders there at the 35-yard line. That's that outside zone play, and it's a play that Eddie George <laughs> made famous as a runner, both at Ohio State and with the Houston Oilers and the Tennessee Titans throughout his career. It's a play they want to get going here with this Tiger offense. Likes what he just saw on special teams. 58-yard kickoff return to set him up. Now on the 35-yard line. Davey Bryant started the game. He's been sharing the job with Draylon Ellis. Play clock down to one. Get it off just in time. Bryant keeps it himself. Gets out to the 30-yard line. Sets up third down and two. Howard Cross, he has been active as a defensive tackle here this afternoon. I don't think any doubt here, Paul. This is going to be four-down territory for Tennessee State. Trying to keep this drive alive. I see them running it or some sort of a quarterback zone read. Give them two bites of the apple here. Nine seconds on the play clock. Plenty of time for Davion Bryant. First career start for the fifth-year senior. Drilled just as he got. And he's still about a yard short, just inside the 30-yard line. And that'll set up fourth and one. And Jason, as you mentioned, likely four-down territory for Eddie George. I like the idea of some sort of a zone read where you give yourself a chance. If you like to look inside, you hand it. And if not, you give 6'5", 225. Devon Bryant a chance to run it and go make a yard. But here's a moment for Tennessee State, their first ever trip to South Bend. The game starting to get away from them. Would look a little different if they could convert here. Still time, four on the play clock. Got to hustle now. Gant to his right. They don't get it off. Eddie called timeout. So fourth down, you know coming in, Jason, that your offensive line is outmanned by the front seven of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. What are you thinking here in this situation? Yeah, like we talked, you know, some sort of an inside zone type play, a north and south type play. If you like the look of it, you hand it. And if not, the quarterback keeps it. Can't underestimate Devion Bryan. He's 225 pounds. So give him a chance to 
to get himself north and south and go make a yard. I don't see them throwing it here. But if you get two options in your run game, I think that's what gives you your best chance. Uh, they've had perfect balance so far, Jason. Exactly 12 passes, 12 runs. Limited success through the air. Blank just four out of eight for 21 yards. Brian is 6'5", 225. If they want him to keep it, he could be tough to bring down. Six guys in the box. I would anticipate them running the ball inside. Brian keeps it. Looks like he has just enough. J.D. Bertrand, the captain, middle linebacker, makes the stop. But that is a Tiger first down. 58-yard punt return setting them up here late in the second quarter. Yeah, it's a good call. You give yourself, if you like the inside run, you take it. If not, 225 pounds. Bertrand's big and physical. He's only 233. You get Brian going north and south. Good pickup by Tennessee State. Seven three is as close as, as they have been. That was their first first down in the last four drives. Keeps it again. More success. Fumble right <laughs> to the Tigers and down to the 12-yard line. Carrion Adrian said, I'll take that. <laughs> first down, Tennessee State. <laughs> Antonio Carter delivered the big hit to knock the ball out. The big guy, Brian, getting north and south. Just didn't bring the ball with him. And Brian goes down after that big hit right there from Antonio Carter. Carter put his helmet right on the football. You know, they used to teach you bite the ball. He bit the ball there. <laughs> ball pops up in the air. Adrian, right place at the right time, keeping the drive alive. Quarterback Davion Bryant is the injured Tiger down on the field with Tennessee State on the move. We're back right after this. Davion Bryant, he started at quarterback here today, walked off the field, and that was nice to see him do that. However, the officials taking a look now to see if it was targeting on the play. Number four for Notre Dame is Antonio Carter, and that's what they are looking at right there. Let's bring in our rules analyst, Reggie Smith, 18 years as an FBS official. Uh, Reggie, good to have you with us. What do you see here? Uh, what it's looking like here, and it's always important to remember the rule, there are two types of targeting. The ball carrier by rule is not defenseless, so the only type of targeting we could have on this play would be with the crown of the helmet. What it's looking like in this replay is I don't believe that there is an attack motion by uh, number four for Notre Dame, and contact actually is made with the shoulder before incidental contact is made with the helmet. In my view, this is something that instant replay should not create a foul for targeting. Reggie, thank you. And that is Davion Bryant, player who was hit there by Antonio Carter in his first year at Notre Dame. Started every, every game last year at Rhode Island. Such a tricky topic, Paul, because obviously we're all interested in player safety. And I think, you know, just this idea of keeping the helmet out of the game is so important. But, you know, in this day and age, some of these helmets are big. And I agree with Reggie. The contact was being initiated with the shoulder, but sometimes the helmet gets in there. And there's some a glancing blow helmet to helmet. So it's it's tough for these guys to be able to distinguish one play After from another. Review, personal foul, targeting with the crown of the helmet, defense number four. The penalty being enforced half the distance to the goal line by rule number four has been disqualified. Reggie Smith, come on back in. What do you think of that call? Well, it was very, very tough with the angles provided, but whenever you have to confirm all aspects, now you're saying that number four for Notre Dame came in in an attacking form, and I just don't see that being the case here. He's trying to wrap. He's trying to go to the side. To me, this should not have been a foul for targeting. They did take a good long look at it, and you heard the result. Antonio Carter targeting the call, and he is out for the rest of the game. I agree with you, Reggie. I think he was intending to hit with that left shoulder and it was a glancing blow helmet to helmet. Those are not easy calls. See the look there in Eddie George's face. You know what? He wants a touchdown right here that would change the feel of this game heading into the locker room. 
Braylon Ellis back in at quarterback. Penalty markers come out just before the ball was snapped. Ball start. Offense number 85. Five-yard penalty. First down. Got a glimpse of Al Gold's approach there. Down in the red zone. Pressure off the edges. Tennessee State got a little jumpy and got themselves a false start. So strictly for the football side of this, Eddie George, he does have the luxury of going to the player who was his backup today. 24 career starts at quarterback for Draylon Ellis, who's in right now. Clock down to two, one. It's a great example there, Paul, of Notre Dame is showing pressure, and Draylon Ellis wants to get out of the play, so he starts the process of audibly, and then Notre Dame starts to back out of it. It's the old we check, you check. And all of a sudden, Draylon wants to go back to the original play. He doesn't have time enough to do it. Eddie George has to bang the timeout. Eddie George, third season as the head coach at Tennessee State. Marcus Freeman, just like Eddie George, played at Ohio State. Freeman, the linebacker, Eddie George, one of the most successful players in the proud history of Ohio State. 1995 Heisman Trophy winner. Third season, he has not had a winning season yet, Jason. He told us during the week with a lot of smiling and a lot of energy and belief. He said, we'll see what happens on the field, but the energy in this building is higher than it's ever been in my three, three seasons heading into this one. Hey, he might not have a winning season, but he's having a winning impact on Tennessee State and all these young men who are playing for him. Uh, he has changed the entire environment for these kids, and they've responded well, and he's building something special there. And, you know, as a coach, one of the most important things to have is credibility. And he has immense credibility from his playing career, but maybe more so the kind of young man he is and how he's been throughout his life. And he's changing lives at Tennessee State. It's fun to see. Draylon Ellis, play action to the end zone. Too high. Karate Brenson skied for it, couldn't come down with it. And that was Benjamin Morrison with the coverage. Like Draylon Ellis's aggressiveness, but don't love the matchup. Benjamin Morrison, one of the best cover corners in the country. Ellis liked the matchup with Karate Brenson just because of Brenson's size, but you can see Morrison is physical. He's got a great feel for covering. His timing and anticipation is excellent. I'd throw it the other way. Second down 10. Up the middle. Not much there. Jalen Rouse carried a couple defenders on that defensive line down to the eight yard line. More pressure by Al Golden there. Just to try to disrupt Tennessee State. And that clock is rolling. Marcus Freeman goes out there and banks the timeout. He wants to give Sam Hartman another opportunity. And when your quarterback is coming into the game with 46 starts, anytime you could get it back to him, it's the right way to think. And I think Marcus Freeman understands the importance of two-minute situations, both on offense and defense, throughout the year in terms of winning big games. So anytime you can get a chance to do that in a game setting, that's going to help their football team. So obviously they're trying to get a stop here. They want to give Hartman one more opportunity in that two-minute situation. You see part of his numbers right there, 114 passing yards so far. He started out seven out of seven. Right now he's eight for 11, warming up and hoping that he gets another shot here. He'll need his defense to come through on third down and nine. We saw heat, heat, and more heat on the first and second down play from Al Golden. Looks like coverage here. Third and goal just inside the 10. Movement. Offense, number 22. Five-yard penalty, second down. What's your philosophy at this point of the field? It's going to be third and goal just inside the 15 on pressure or no pressure from the defense. Well, in general, in those situations, when you're backed out this far, it's better to force them to throw the ball underneath and rally and tackle. You don't want to isolate one of your guys outside and give them a chance to throw a ball up and make a play, playing man-to-man -man coverage. And I think that's what we're getting from Al Golden. It looks like a three-man rush. They're going to play with depth and rally and tackle. Raylan Ellis, one out of five for four. Here comes the blitz, and they get it. Ellis sacked to the 19-yard line by Jordan Botello. Al Golden got me on that one. <laughs> 
Looked like it was a three-man rush, and they were playing soft. Pressure, pressure, and more pressure. They bring all three of them from depth. Not enough guys to block it for Tennessee State. Ellis didn't recognize it. Quick enough to get the ball out. Hard to scramble out of that pocket. Jordan Batella showed up last week, showing up again today at that Viper position. Yeah, how about his journey on this defense? He came in as a rover, which is kind of half linebacker, a little bit safety, then he moves outside linebacker. And Al Golden telling us yesterday he has found a home at defensive end. And that's really what you want with your linemen. You want guys to be athletic. So for a guy to be able to be a half linebacker, half safety, and then go to outside linebacker, and then go to defensive line, you know you're getting a big time athlete. He went from 220 to 260. You got a glimpse of the athleticism right there. James Lowry from 35 yards out. He's made one from 38 and had one blocked from 29. And this time he pulled it. A little bit too much draw on that one, and the score remains Notre Dame 28 and Tennessee State 3. Red zone defense for Notre Dame showing up. Achilles heel last year. One more time making a stop. They blocked the last one. Sometimes when you block a kick, the next one's not quite as easy. Big time drive by Tennessee State. Eddie George not happy. Hey, that's two drives where Tennessee State has had the ball inside of the 20-yard line at Notre Dame and come away with no points. Two missed field goals, one blocked, and that one just pulled right there. So now we get this look at Sam Hartman. See what he can do now. 53 seconds left. He has one timeout remaining, and he'll start this drive 8 out of 11 for a buck 14. Paul, obviously you're up 28 to 3 in this situation. So... You know, in general, you could say, hey, let's just bleed this clock and, and let's get out of Dodge and go to halftime. But I think Mark is going to use this as an opportunity to grow as a team. This is Jabron Payne. Swings it out of the backfield and didn't get out to the 25. Didn't make it out of bounds. Five stops for now at 48 seconds. Hey, we talked in the open about Mark is less concerned about chasing wins and more concerned about the team achieving their fullest potential. And so this is what he's trying to do. We're going to try to get better as a team right here. You got to maximize the opportunities when you get a chance to do these two minute drills, take advantage of them. Four man rush. Pocket over the middle. Strike. 41 yard line, first down, Notre Dame. Mitchell Evans, first catch of his season. He had three last year, all coming in the Gator Bowl. Right back on the ball now. Still one timeout left. Floating, firing again to Evans. Mitchell Evans coming alive here on this drive. Back-to-back -back receptions, both good for first downs. Love the combination. They ran a seam on the last one. Now they run up and they break out to the corner route. Good complimentary route for Mitchell Evans. It's nice to see the tight ends involved in this passing game. 38 yards on those completions. Jabron Payne, the tailback, right back to the air. Little bounce over the middle again. Evans, three consecutive catches. All three for first downs. Now it's first and 10 of the 28. Gain of 14. How about that? Seam route. An outbreaking route. Now he comes back with the in-breaking route. Protection clean. Hartman on the money. Good operation right back on the ball. More time for Hartman. Let's it go. Wide open. Jaden Greathouse. True freshman with his first catch of this day after he had two touchdown receptions last week. And just like that. Notre Dame is first and goal from the four. That one for 24 yards. How comfortable does Sam Hartman look Man. running this offense? He looks comfortable. You know who looks really tired is that pass rush for Tennessee <laughs> State. That's for sure. Notre Dame offensive line showing up big time. Sam Hartman, you see the numbers there. He started this game seven for seven. This drive, he's five for five. Jabron Payne, the tailback. They still do have that one timeout left. To the air again. More time. End zone. Touchdown. Holden stays. His first catch of the season. Good for six. Paul, well, we talked to offensive coordinator Jared Parker yesterday. He's also the tight ends coach. And you could tell he was a little bit disappointed that the tight ends had no targets last week. 
on this drive. Mitchell Evans catches three. Holden Stays catches one for the touchdown. The tight ends are officially involved. Sam Hartman's finding them. What a drive for Sam Hartman. Six out of six. Extra point. Up and in, and you see why Notre Dame defensively, we're calling those timeouts. We want the ball back. We want to get it back to number 10. And that looked like a Thursday practice. Well, speaking of Thursday practice, you can practice as much as you want. I mean, as head coaches, it's, we, we did more two-minute than anybody in the history of football. You can't practice those situations enough, but it's never like playing in the game. You need to get a game situation. You have the clock. You have the crowd. You have different situations come up. You just can't get enough of them. And, and Marcus Freeman banged the timeout and said, hey, we want to see Sam Hartman in this offense maximize this two-minute situation. Love what they did. Get a completion early to Payne. Get the ball out of his hand. You come back. You went on an in cut. You went on a corner route. Sam Hartman throwing a variety of passes. The protection is clean. He's working through his progressions. And he's on the money every single time. Sam Hartman throws a catchable ball. He's a mature player. He sees the defense. He throws the ball on time and makes it easy for the guys on the other end. That was a big time drive for the Irish. Holden stays two career catches. Now his first touchdown smiles for Sam Hartman. You know what he really likes? Spreading it around. Ten different pass catchers have caught the ball already. Paul, the best offense is attack different ways. It's run and pass. It's different kinds of runs. It's different running backs. Notre Dame is showing you that. If you can throw it to different guys, the defense simply has to pick their poison. And if you're Brandon Fisher on the other side right now, who are you trying to stop? Okay, let's load up on Estime in this running game. That guy, Sam Hartman, is going to wear you out and uh, wear you out to different guys. It's a tough matchup for this Tennessee State team. An impressive outing so far for Hartman and this Irish offense. His completion's also getting a lot of mileage, just under 14 yards per catch so far. Davion Bryant is back in at quarterback. Remember, he went out after the big hit. Been sharing time with Draylon Ellis. Final seconds will tick off the clock here. The home opener for Notre Dame. Couple of moments for Tennessee State in their very first trip to South Bend, but the score would indicate it has been all Notre Dame. 35 to three up at halftime as Sam Hartman is 14 out of 17 for a buck 94. Notre Dame 35, Tennessee State three. The All-State Halftime Report is coming up right after these messages. Time now for the college football bulletin here in South Bend. Season opener here at home. Five different players have scored touchdowns for Notre Dame. They lead as halftime comes to a close 35 to three. And Jason, they have spread it out. Five different rushers going for a buck 51. And how about 10 pass catchers for nearly 200 yards? When you can attack different ways with different people, it's really hard on a defense. And how about Sam Hartman? You know, in that two minute drive, <laughs> got it back with 38 seconds. Goes six for six, the length of the field. Yeah, looks like he might be done for the day. He's got the white shirt on. How about that? <laughs> he deserves it. And Steve Angeli, who played a little bit last week toward the end of the win in Dublin against Navy, looks like he has got the helmet on and he is ready to roll. Sam Hartman, 14 out of 17, 194, a couple of touchdowns, no picks. And Marcus Freeman will eventually get a look at his backup quarterback, Steve Angeli. Well, just like last week, you can say, Jason, the first five possessions for Notre Dame ended with touchdowns. So if they wanted to get a look at, at the punt team, this, these haven't been the first couple of weeks to do so. <laughs> That's exactly right. Tennessee State, first time they had the ball back in the first quarter, went down, moved the ball down, and ended up with a field goal. Let's go to the field and check in with Zorn. Well, going into this one, Tennessee State head coach Eddie George just wanted his guys to fight. And he says we are still fighting. He felt like they missed some opportunities in the first quarter that really cost them. On the other side, Marcus Freeman, after a 7-3 first quarter, just told his players and coaches to calm down and go back to executing. By halftime, five different players had scored. And when I asked him about sharing the ball, he said we have a talented team and it's important to keep everyone fresh. Zora, thank you. And for Tennessee State, Jason, I would think it's important to think back to there were a number of times in that first half they had three possessions end up inside the 20. They were moving the ball, had a hard time finishing. They played a couple of different quarterbacks. Davion Bryant got the start. Draylon Ellis has also played as they've been alternating series. This is Bryant. His tailback is Jalen Rouse. 
Rouse, a couple of different cutbacks, and makes it to the 25-yard line, just back to the line of scrimmage. Jordan Botello with the stop. So I mentioned a little bit of success for the Tigers. Look at that first drive, 55 yards, and since not even half of that. Paul, you mentioned it earlier. The opportunity for Tennessee State was when they knocked the ball out on kickoff coverage, and they get the ball inside the 20-yard line with an opportunity to go ahead against Notre Dame. Notre Dame does an excellent job getting off the field. They block the field goal, and the game hasn't been the same since. Starters out there as I look up front, middle, and the back for Notre Dame. Gain of four, bring it up third down and six here for Eddie George and the Tigers in his third season as the head coach. After a wonderful season or a wonderful career in the National Football League, see if his offense can get off to a good start here. Yeah, we had a great visit with Eddie the other day, and he was realistic about what the challenge was coming up here. Notre Dame is a better team than Tennessee State by a long shot, so there was a certain way they could hang in the game. They didn't take advantage of that opportunity, but like Zora said, he wants to see his team fight. That's the biggest thing here in these last 30 minutes. Well, there's a good start. Well done by Bryant to buy extra time, and now inside of Notre Dame territory on the 48-yard line, Deshaun Davis with a catch for 21 yards. Yeah, Brian has, has done this throughout the ball game. He moves to the right. There's a free rusher right in his face, and he throws on the move. He keeps his eyes down the field. Davis is one of his favorite targets. Big pick up there. Jalen Rouse meet J.D. Bertrand. Middle linebacker, the captain, loss of two. Just was so impressed with J.D. Bertrand and his linebacker core last year against Navy. Here's Bertrand right here on the right side. He's so smart. He's so prepared. He's such an instinctive guy. He sees the opening. He goes and hits it for the tackle for loss. Leading tackler for this Notre Dame defense in each of the last two years. Seen this quite a bit from the Tigers. They try to draw Notre Dame off, and they take a long look over to their sideline. Still time with six seconds left on the play clock. Brian keeps it himself. Hit low and spins out to the 48-yard line. Back to the or back near the initial line of scrimmage. Gain of three. Thomas Harper, Oklahoma State transfer up from his safety spot to make a tackle. Paul, last week going against Navy, when you're facing the triple option, the nickel back wasn't really a factor in that game. And, and, and this week, the defense probably more traditional for Notre Dame. It's good to see Harper, the transfer from Oklahoma State, show up. He's been active in the running game. And good to see this Notre Dame defense tested in the traditional way on third down and long. This is third and ten. Last week, they did not get that against the heavy run Navy offense. Al Golden, defensive coordinator, has been a good mix of blitz and rushing just four. This is five. They force the early throw, nearly intercepted at the 50. Knocking that in the air has been Jordan Botello, who's been active as a defensive end today to bring up fourth down and 10. It's the right idea by Tennessee State, you know, going screen on third and long. But I think the Notre Dame defensive front kind of sensed it. <laughs> it was a jailbreak. Anytime they're not blocking you at all, Smart and instinctive to stop. Patella did that. He's going to be seeing that one in his dreams. Opportunity for him to pick that thing off and take it the other way. Chris Tyree is deep, short, and over end punt. Tyree has a touchdown catch earlier today. Fair catch on the 16 yard line. To get the third quarter started, Notre Dame's defense does its job. We'll take a look at the offense and Steve Angeli after the break. Hey, above the rest brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. It's all about this offensive line. Two new guards. The best thing they do is pull. Joe Walt, the big left tackle, knocking them off the ball. They've been dominant in the running game, but also pretty darn good in pass protection. Watch Hartman here. Goes through his progression. One, two, hits his third receiver. Same thing here. You make a hand sandwich and give a cup of coffee in that pocket here. Hartman's been outstanding, but it starts with those big guys up front. Sam Hartman will take a seat now. 14 out of 17, 194, a couple of touchdowns, and he will watch his backup, Steve Angeli. 6'2 and a half, 211 sophomore from Westfield, New Jersey. Played a little bit at the end of the game in Dublin. See how much time he can get here today. Now, that's the starting tailback, Audrey Gestime, dragging Tigers out across the 20 yard line. But as for Steve Angeli, you know, he was next man up for quite a bit of time last year, never got onto the field. Feet went last week, and offensive coordinator Jared Parker told us yesterday, Jason, he needs to play, needs to get hit and respond, have to get him in there. 
No doubt, and what a great opportunity. I like the decision by Marcus Freeman to get him out there and give him this opportunity when you're up by 32 in the third quarter. Sets up Tobias Merriweather. His second catch of the day goes nowhere, and this will be the first third down and long for Steve Angeli, Jeremiah Josephs, the safety for the Tigers to make the tackle. Paul, I don't know if you know much about New Jersey high school football, but they got these big Catholic schools, Bergen Catholic, big time, St. Joe's and Mott Bell, big time. Estimate played at St. Joe's, Angeli at Bergen Catholic. So the Bergen Catholic guys got to rely on the St. Joe's guy in this situation. <laughs> That's what I tell them to do. Give the ball to number seven. Finds himself in a third down here. Third down and, and seven here, probably third down and four. Looking to get it to Jaden Thomas. Oh, couldn't slip that tackle. Now he did get just enough for a first down. So he starts out his day with a completion. Again, it was Jeremiah Josephs. And a new set of downs here for Steve Angeli. And they're operating pace here. They want him to get right back on the ball. And I like this. They've asked him to do different things, get the ball out of his hand, how to handle a pressure in that situation. But he just needs to play. And uh, we talked about it earlier. Marcus Freeman said, hey, we're not chasing wins. We're just trying to reach our full potential. This is an opportunity for a backup quarterback like Angeli to get snaps and see if he can live up to the potential that he has. Holden stays in motion. He had a touchdown in the second quarter. Takes a pain. Hit just as he got rid of the ball. The ball fluttered to the ground. Jalen Bell. Outside linebacker got to him right away. And a little bit of an example there about what Jared Parker said. He said, the red jersey in practice means you're living a lie. You got to know what the pressure really feels like. <laughs> he feels it there. And I think if you see at the end of that thing, and Jelly gets back there and he looks at it, he looks at it again. Bell's their best rusher. He wins up front. But that ball could have gotten out one hitch quicker before that defensive lineman got there. And that just comes from reps. That comes from playing in the game and seeing it and seeing pattern versus coverage. Red jersey is the red jersey the quarterbacks wear in practice. Estimate, toss sweep. He's got some room. <laughs> Thought he might be able to turn that corner as he crossed the 30-yard line. Picks up seven. My whole career was as a backup quarterback, Paul, and uh, I had the great fortune of playing with Emmett Smith for eight years in Dallas, and whenever I got in the game, I told him, get ready. I'm going to hand it to you and throw it to you. <laughs> and so when you haven't taken a lot of snaps and you're a backup, find the guy who's played a lot and who's really good and make sure he takes some pressure off of you. So give it to seven. Give it to these runners. Get yourself comfortable. Get your feet wet a little bit. And then as this drive unfolds, you start being more and more decisive in your, in your play. Notre Dame 7 out of 7, converting third down against the Blitz. A lot of contact there, and yes, penalty marker comes in. <laughs> Jeremiah Love nearly tackled by outside linebacker Monroe Beard. Do you remember the great Sam Weiss line from years ago, the, the old head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, NFL Films? He said, he's going to be okay, but that is a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I do recall that one. <laughs> That's a penalty, boys. Holding. Defense to 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Keeps the drive alive for Angeli. And that's Jalen Bell. Transfer from Mississippi Valley State in his first season for Eddie George and the Tigers. 9-18 left in the third quarter. Notre Dame up 35-3. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Allstate. You're in good hands. Hey, we had pretty awesome entertainment at halftime. Tennessee State's the aristocrat of bands. All kinds of people staying in their seats to watch and to cheer and to be entertained by the talent that was out there. All kinds of accolades. If you look at what they've done, they performed at the presidential inauguration of John F. Kennedy Jr. back in 1961. Won a Grammy recently. A lot of fun to watch them. The energy and the sound they brought here at halftime. Audrey Gastemay back in at tailback. First and 10 Notre Dame on the 43-yard line. Steve Angeli, the backup quarterback, in on his first series. Little patience from Estime. Couldn't get away with the stiff arm, and he's brought down at the 46-yard line by safety, Jeremiah Josephs. Talked a lot about this Notre Dame offensive line. They have the new offensive line coach, Joe Rudolph, and there are some wrinkles. Harry Heastan was the line coach here. He did an outstanding job developing some of these young players, but there's a couple scheme wrinkles. That's one of them. That was the first play they ran last week against Navy. It's a counter play back to the weak side with the receiver leading up inside. So some wrinkles are helping these big guys up front knock this Tennessee defensive line off the ball. 
Second and seven up the middle, picking his way out to the 50-yard line is Andre Gastame again. Some good work here to start the third quarter. James Green, the captain outside linebacker, with the stop. Hyundai players on the rise, and we look at the running backs. We've been talking about them from the start. Now the man on the right, Devin Ford, left the game after a big hit. He's not been back and will not return, but Estime, Love, and Payne. Also, Jadarian Price played last week. Lots of running backs getting touches and impressing here for the Fighting Irish. Ron Payne, the tailback right now on third and three. Right side. Just didn't have enough room there as he approached the boundary. Shoved out of bounds before he picked up that first down. Yeah, so, we'll see what the Fighting Irish do here on fourth and yeah, two. Yeah, it looks like Marcus Freeman is going to have him get on the ball here. You see teams do this a lot in short yardage situations. Get on the ball. It's a healthy two yards. Fourth and two, some early movement there. Yeah, penalty markers come out. The Irish offensive line got a head start there. Ball start. Offense, number 78. Five yard penalty, fourth down. That was Pat Coog in the left guard, and oftentimes when a new quarterback comes in, the cadence is a little bit different. Short yardage situation, let's get on the ball, let's go fast. Timing probably felt a little bit different between Angeli and Hartman. Coogan was early. So Marcus Freeman will get a look at Bryce McPherson, the, the punter for Notre Dame, who hasn't had to do a lot. Five possessions, five touchdowns to start this game, but gets a little work here in the third quarter. Dayron Johnson. What's that one sail into the end zone? Both teams have had the ball once in this third quarter. Nobody has scored yet. 7-19 left in the third. Fighting Irish remain in control. So how did Eddie George in the spring of 2021 go from working in wealth management with no coaching background, go from that to Tennessee State's head football coach? Well, school president, Dr. Glenda Glover, who we knew professionally, just asked him, would you consider becoming our head football coach? Eddie scoffed. He said, I'm, a, I'm in a business. I'm an actor. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Heck no. Well, they stayed on him. He started to think about what it could be if he took a, a long-term holistic approach. He was still leaning toward no until he called his former head coach, Jeff Fisher. Jeff Fisher said, you'd be wonderful, Eddie. It'd be wonderful for the community. Tigers come out right to the ground game. Pick up a couple there on first down. Eddie told us that by the end of that conversation, he said, yes. I'll do it, seeing this more of a calling than an opportunity that he sought out to be into football as a head coach. Yeah, it's a great story. You know, we talked about it. Eddie George was a Heisman Trophy winner, was a Pro Bowl player in the NFL, rushed for 10,000 yards, but afterwards had so many different things going on in his life. A really, really successful. I mean, he, uh, one of these guys, he's a Renaissance man. He was, he was play, the play Chicago on Broadway. He was in the lead. <laughs> this guy could do it all. Uh, and to have the opportunity to come here, initially he was like, eh, I don't know if I want to dive into that. But the more he talked to people, and the more he visited with Jeff Fisher, there he is right there. Look at that guy. <laughs> Talk about major league pitching. Nobody just gets that job. I mean, that's right. big time. Broadway. And, uh, you know, so he had a lot of other things he could do with his life, but I, I do think he felt a calling. I do think he felt like he could impact a lot of lives. And I think that would, that's what drove his decision. So he's trying to build a football program here. There's no doubt about that, but he's trying to change the generation of young men who play for him, and, and I think he's doing that right now. Tigers third down and five. Two penalty markers come in there. Xavier Watts had the tight coverage. Also, Draylon Ellis. As you can see, remains on the field, but we'll check in on the penalty marker. Our referee today is Mike Roach. Jalen Ellis saying, I will stay in this game. Ellis noticeably limping has been sharing time with Davion Bryant, who started a quarterback for Tennessee State. Sorting this one out, and Michael let us know. There are two fouls on the play, one on each team. Pass interference on the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. 
Offense number 55 for a late hit knockdown. It's a 15 yard penalty, be first down and 10 for Tennessee State. Just the second penalty of the season called against Notre Dame as Draylon Ellis continues to try and shake it off. We noticed yesterday when we were watching film that a lot of talent, good experience, but at just 175 would be difficult to hold up against this pass rush, but he does stay in the game right now. He sure does. He has some ability. He's quick, he's fast, he's elusive, he's got a live arm, but he's a slight guy. And uh, as he plays more and more, he's going to learn how to get that ball out of his hand quicker, keep himself out of danger. Romelo Tarr for the offensive line and checking out there as we saw on the sideline for the Tigers. First down and 10 on the 25. It's out of his hands quickly. Good cut back there near the 30-yard line. And out of bounds at the 35 goes Trey Boone. got another injured Tiger there. The three members of the athletic training staff out on the field to tend to him. Arian Harvey checking out of the game. Meanwhile, Tennessee State having a little bit of success now, running and also throwing the ball. And thinking about Eddie George there, Jason, you mentioned that he thought of this as a calling to become the head coach, to impact lives. We talked to him for about an hour during the week, and he talked a lot more about that impact he could have on the student athletes, much more so than X and O football. First down and 10, boom, hit from the backside. Just as he got to the 35, he picks up one. No doubt, one of the guys who talked to him was the great Deion Sanders, who had an unbelievable win today for Colorado down there at TCU. And Deion was at Jackson State at the time, and he reached out, and Eddie had never coached football before. Obviously an amazing player, but had never been on the other side of it. And, you know, Dion assured him that, hey, you, you can do this. There are different styles of coaches. You could be a CEO type guy. And, uh, and I think that was big for him to understand that he could lead the organization and impact people's lives and then hire some veteran coaches to help him learn that side of it. And that's what he's done. I think it's been a good formula for him. Two tailbacks in the game now for the Tigers, Jordan Gant and also Trey Boone. Ellis fakes. On the move and just barely got rid of that one before Nana Osafa Menza got him. And he's slow to get up at the 25, but does come to his feet. Ellis moves to his left. Like what Osafa Menza does there. Doesn't really fall for the pump fake. Just goes after the quarterback and knocks him down and forces the erratic throw. But, you know, back to Eddie George. If you're a young kid who's thinking about playing college football and Eddie George calls you, or Eddie George is in your living room, wanting to come to Tennessee State, that can be impactful. I mean, this is an impressive guy beyond just his football playing ability. He's an impressive human being, and he's going to have a positive impact on a lot of these lives, just like Dion did at Jackson State and also at Colorado. 39, they set up the screen going absolutely nowhere. DJ Brown, the safety. Most experienced player on that side of the ball made the play. Yeah, the approach is right. It's pressure, pressure, more pressure coming off the edge. It's Jalen Snead. This is a guy, a linebacker, who's getting more and more playing time, big time athleticism, putting pressure on Ellis. Like the approach by Tennessee State, trying to throw the screen. Notre Dame was ready. Jackson Foster on to punt. Chris Tyree, one touchdown already today. Punt goes off the side of his foot. Tyree will let it bounce, and it takes a Tiger bounce inside the 20-yard line. And down to the 17. After Notre Dame scored 28 points in the second quarter, scoreless in the third, they'll try and change that right after the break. Tomorrow, the Premier League is on NBC and Peacock as two bitter rivals clash in London. Arsenal, Manchester United. That's coming up tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. There is the Gold Dome being rebuilded here as classes just get underway at the campus at South Bend. 434 left in the third quarter. The home opener, Notre Dame on top of Tennessee State, 35 to 3. Uh, obviously, we're watching this game right here, but just like all of you, we're quite aware of the lead story in college football. Colorado, led by Deion Sanders in his first game. They go to TCU and win 45 to 42. Deion's son as Steve Angeli flips out to the right side. And the completion down to the 24. Sun throws for over 500 yards. We knew there was excitement. We all wanted to see what happened. 
That team coming up with a win is a huge upset. Yeah, prime time. You know, I played with Dion for five years in Dallas, and I don't know that I've ever been around a guy who was as good an athlete. I mean, he was different than everybody else, but that's not what made him great. Uh, he was so instinctive. He knew football in and out. He was one of the smartest players I've ever been around. And talking to him through the years when he became a coach, you could tell he knew what he wanted to do. You know, for him to take that job down at, down at Jackson State, as we watch Estimate continue to rumble, uh, you know, he changed lives down there, like we're talking about with Eddie George. And, you know, the approach that he took at Colorado, obviously very different than anybody else with all the transfers, but he has a magnetic way about him. He has an energy that is just contagious, was contagious throughout our Dallas Cowboy football team. Anybody who's ever been around him feels that magnetism, and certainly that's happening out there in Colorado. Hats off to him. What a win for those guys today. And we do have an injured Tiger down on the 42-yard line. And that's the safety, Jeremiah Josephs. We called his name a number of times today. In the defensive backfield, also making a lot of tackles on fighting Irish players. Audric Estime, by the way, is over 100 yards now with that 26-yard run. He's up to 114. See Eddie George there. And good to see Josephs jogging off. You've mentioned that he made the call to Deion Sanders and said, hey, can, is this possible? Can someone without any experience at all be successful? And this is when Deion was still at Jackson State. And you mentioned it, but I want to come back to it. Deion told him clearly, you can be one of two kinds of head coaches. You can be the CEO type or this X and O football kind of guy. And Eddie choosing to come in and have a big vision, thinking about the, the experience and the resources and the footprint. He said he's open to learning the X's and O's, but he is much more of a CEO kind of head coach. No doubt. And, Ed, and Eddie knows football. You can't be as successful as he has without knowing football, but he had to learn the coaching side of it. And the best way to do that is hire some experienced coaches in all three phases of your team, and you can learn as you go. But his presence, his leadership, his magnetism, like Dion's, is the thing that's going to drive this program. And uh, it's really coming from his heart how he wants to impact lives here, and you see him doing it. So I'm pulling hard for him. This is a tough day. They're overmatched against Notre Dame, but he's doing the right things. And if you look at it, Clyde Simmons, the great defensive lineman, for the Philadelphia Eagles for years. He's his defensive line coach. Joe Bowden is his linebacker coach, also some NFL experience. So a lot of NFL guys who have coaching experience helping him along the way. They're going to do some great things here at Tennessee State. In the backfield for Notre Dame, Jadarian Price hasn't had much time today. Late throw to the far boundary for Steve Angeli. Uh, to Rico Flores goes incomplete. Let's go to the field and check in with Zora. Coach George had the Tigers complete a 350-word paper on the vision for their legacy during training camp this summer. He wanted the players to write details of their mental, spiritual, physical, and social goals. Safety Josh Green told me he didn't think much of the assignment at first, but then he started to hear all the different visions his teammates wrote down and quickly bought in. Coach George said that work every night is how they truly became a team. Zora, thank you. His defense facing third down and eight. Good pocket for Angeli over the middle. Mitchell Evans, his fourth catch. Of this day, member had no catches last week in the win at Navy. Good for a first down. Down to the 36-yard line. Paul, well, oftentimes if you're a backup quarterback, you get into the game, everything feels fast. You got to calm yourself down. Really impressive by Steve Angeli there. The protection's clean, but he's going through his progression. Doesn't go to the first guy, doesn't go to the second guy, works his way all the way back to the tight end in the middle of the field. Like his poise, like his presence, delivered a strike. Under center now, Jadarian Price, toss sweep, cut down at the 40-yard line well before he got back to the line of scrimmage and loses four yards. That's Josh Green from his safety spot making the stop. Josh Green's a good story, isn't he? He and his brother, James. Josh has been here six years. James has been here seven years at Tennessee State, kind of the heart and soul of these guys with some injury red shirts and with the COVID. These guys are the veteran players, and They've been important parts of this program here the last few years. And they look across at the Notre Dame side of the ball, and they see all the starters on the offensive line. Fighting Irish have not scored yet in this third quarter. They try to pave the way to points here. Second down, 14. There's a blitz. Angeli escapes for a moment. There you go. Gets it to Jadarian Price. Cuts it back, and he will score. Touchdown, Notre Dame. yards, Steve Angeli to Jatarian Price. Number one trade for a quarterback, Paul, is instinct. 
We've seen Sam Hartman's instincts. Get a look at Steve Angel. He's pressure off the back edge. It's the Elway spin. Gets out of it. Keeps his eyes up. He finds Price in the flat. Excellent job by Price. Little head and shoulders cuts back inside. Price scored a touchdown on his first touch last week. Scores another one this week. Five different backs are playing for the Irish. They're getting after Tennessee State. Hey, Jason, right when he came in, what was the advice you said? Not a bad <laughs> idea to just to find your tailback. Exactly right. Get it to those runners. Take all the pressure in the world off of them. Three different tailbacks have scored here for Notre Dame. Jeremiah Love, Andre Gestine, and now Jadarian Price. Steve Angeli's never going to forget that one right there. Scrambles out of it, keeps his eyes up, and he finds Price. He better keep that football. A lot of smiles there for the backup quarterback from Westfield, New Jersey. So the man running the show for the Notre Dame offense, this is new. He's right behind there. That's Jared Parker. He was on the staff last year, but he was a tight end coach. Now he's the offensive coordinator. We talked about calling plays now, getting back into calling plays. Did it a little bit at West Virginia. He held up his play sheet in front of us and said, this is collaboration here. This is the players. This is my offensive line coach, Joe Rudolph. Quarterback coach Gino Gadulli. It's not just me. I know it'll all come back to me if it doesn't work, but putting it together has been all about a lot of different people. Haven't done that job for a long time. I understand exactly what he's saying. It's a collaborative effort. You can't be an expert in all the fields. Why not use the expertise of Joe Rudolph to put that to put that run game and that protection plan together? Why not Gino Gadulli and, and, and the, re the receiver coach? Chancey Stuckey, why not use those guys to help get some input in the passing game and the different situations that come up in a ball game? And you know, he runs it, he's in charge of it, he's responsible for it, but it's collaborative, and the collaboration's working well. You mentioned Gino Gadulli, we saw him there on the sideline, and this is new for Notre Dame, the offense and the quarterbacks. I mentioned Tommy Reese last year, he was quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. He was always in the booth calling plays. Now they have Jared Parker playing that role, but you also have the quarterback coach on the sideline communicating and interacting with the coaches that one extra layer of help whereas last year Tommy was calling plays and coaching from the booth yeah and Gina Gadulli has experience he was an excellent quarterback himself he coached Desmond Ritter at the University of Cincinnati so he's been around good guys he knows quarterback play and these quarterbacks have responded well to him during the week and also on Saturday afternoon they like the environment it's a good environment for young quarterback and veteran quarterbacks alike Tennessee State gives it off to Trey Boone, and back into quarterback is Davion Bryant. Joshua Burnham, back up defensive end, in to keep back to a gain of only three. Yeah, just to finish on Notre Dame's offense a little bit, the real test will be next week. You know, this has been Navy and Tennessee State the last couple weeks. Notre Dame is better than they are. Uh, but they've done everything they've asked. They've been balanced. They've been attacking. They've been efficient. They've made big plays in both the run and the pass. But as this season goes on and the schedule gets tougher, we'll find out more and more about it. Quarterbacks have really struggled for Tennessee State, just seven out of 18. The wall uh -oh. intercepted. Uh -oh. Clarence Lewis cuts it back, uh -oh. stiff arm, pick six, number six. Defense gets in on the scoring end, Clarence Lewis from 32 yards out. The matchup Tennessee State was most concerned about was up front. And one more time, this Notre Dame defensive line puts pressure on Davian Bryant. It's an ill-advised throw. Clarence Lewis sitting up underneath the route. Bryant threw it right to him. When you get that pass rush in your face, you speed up your delivery. Your decisions aren't quite as good. Clarence Lewis cashed in on it. Spencer Schrader has been busy in this spot. Another extra point is up and in. And Notre Dame now leads 49 to 3. Clarence Lewis with his third career interception. And Jason looking like a, a running back there. Yeah, he's talking about that. The stiff arm, and it went along very well with the cutback. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not quite the Heisman pose. <laughs> but it was it. You see him right here in the slot. Bryant tries to move to the right. Good job by Clarence Lewis, keeping his eyes on the quarterback. Understanding where he was. Again, the pressure up front. Four seal advised throw. Lewis cashed in. And this Irish defense, they're having some fun. Hey, it's easy to have fun when you're 
nearly two games into the season and you haven't given up a touchdown yet. Just two field goals for Al Golden's defense. Came on board last year, first year as the defensive coordinator after spending the previous four seasons in the NFL, linebacker coach with the Lions and also the Bengals. And he told us it's easy to come back when you have your entire back seven back, that's the linebackers and also the defensive backs, and the entire defensive staff comes back as well. Yeah, nine senior starters on this defense. Clarity equals velocity. They're clear on what Al Golden's asking them to do. The staff is clear. They're together. They can make adjustments. They talk about them. There's a lot of veteran leadership there. These guys know exactly what they're being asked to do, and they go play fast. They go execute. Take a peek at this pass rush. It's been happening all day long. It's been blitz, blitz, and more blitz. Al Gold not afraid to bring it. Tennessee State has no answers for it. And then there's the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Howard Cross right down the middle. Forcing an ill-advised throw. So the pressure, the pressure burst pipes. 75% of takeaways happen as a result of something going on in the pocket. So when that defensive line shows up and affects the quarterback, that's when you take the ball away. It's been the case today. And still bringing pressure, a blitz up the middle, and this time Draylon Ellis keeps it himself and picks it up five yards, tackle made by Joshua Burnham. Tennessee State right back on the ball. It has been a theme today, no matter the score. Now Golden dialing up pressure as the third quarter comes to a close. Third quarter that saw the Fighting Irish tack on a couple of more touchdowns. One from the offense and one from the defense. First one from Jadarian Bryce, Steve Angeli's first touchdown pass. We head to the fourth, Notre Dame up 49-3. Time now for the progressive game flow, and let's focus in on Al Golden's Fighting Irish defense. And what a start to the season. That's right, not a touchdown given up yet. Last week, Navy barely over three yards per play. Right now, Tennessee State just inside of three yards per play. And you see the sacks and the interceptions. One of those interceptions here in that third quarter led to a touchdown return from Clarence Lewis. And they've been great in situational football as well. You talk about third down there, 4-14. Last week, 3 of 10 today. So they're getting off the field on third down. They've been excellent in the red zone. It's been really impressive. They've been better than Navy. They've been better than Tennessee State. We know that. They're going to be challenged more as they go, uh, but they're off to an awfully good start. Notre Dame defense now, and it's early, but with that pick six, they've scored as many points as they've given up with that pair of field goals. Third down and one here for the Tigers. Ellis working the option pitch. And the cutback looks like it got just enough for the first. Jalen Sneed. Moving well there at outside linebacker, Jordan Gant with the carry. And that is just enough for a Tiger first down. Well, you know, we talked at the outset, hey, the numbers are impressive on defense, but it's how they're playing. They're playing fast. They're playing physical. They're sideline to sideline. Jalen Sneed on that play. <laughs> Coming from the middle of the field, tracking that thing down, and the rest of his buddies showing up, too. Just love how they're playing. It leaps off the tape when you watch this Notre Dame defense. At Theron H., the first-year defensive coordinator for Tennessee State, as Ellis takes a look over, said, these three linebackers, as good as I've seen, before coming on board here, spent four years in the Pac-12 at Arizona. Quick flip out to the right side. Nice cutback. And that should get another Tennessee State first down. And those linebackers, when, when your top three tacklers are linebackers, okay, you expect that. But when all three come back the next year, and that's what Notre Dame has this year, it's a wonderful place for any coordinator to start. Yeah, and then you, you see the young guys now. Jalen Sneed's getting a chance to play. Onye's getting a chance to play. These guys were all running around as well. So the standard's been set by the veterans. Give these young guys a chance, but they have to uphold that standard. And that's what Al Golden and his defensive staff are trying to do right now. Give these guys an opportunity to show that they belong. Get a chance here to make a tackle just inside of Notre Dame territory down to the 48-yard line. And we were talking to Marcus Freeman yesterday, and he was, he was speaking specifically, and there's his coordinator, Al Golden, about the running backs. He said, we want to wear people out. We want to have the kind of numbers to keep coming at you. That's another reason why you see these young linebackers out there quite a bit, because they could be part of that, even though they have three veterans in front of them. If your goal is to wear out the other team, got to have some depth. 
No doubt. That's one of the oldest stories in defensive football. You got an eight man rotation on that defensive line. Keep those guys fresh. Keep the backers fresh. It's tough on the offense. Well, that's a great play in the backfield by Joshua Burnham. Speaking of depth, listed as third string, but that's a play for a loss of three. Burnham's one of those guys that just continues to show up here at Notre Dame. The penetration, he runs down the line of scrimmage. When that tackle goes away, he just chases it down, and there's no hesitation in him. Big play last week against Navy, coming back for another tackle for loss. 6'3", 248, sophomore out of Traverse City, Michigan. Third down nine, another blitz. Loads it up down the far sideline. A little bit too much. In between the 15 and 10 yard line, Jaron Turner, the intended receiver. I like the decision. You get man-to-man -man coverage outside, just give him a chance. A little bit long with the throw, but if you're in a situation like this, take a shot. Coverage is clean. Ryan Just too Barnes. far with the throw. Ryan Barnes in for the first time with the coverage now from the seven yard line. And that's Chris Tyree. Tried to skip out of trouble. Couldn't quite do so. Early in the fourth quarter, home opener for Notre Dame. They lead 49 to three. Eddie George told us during the week, hey, I know Notre Dame has history, but we have history too at Tennessee State. How about the defensive line? Claude Humphrey, terrific player. He's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. On that D-line, one of the best nicknames of all time, an excellent player at Tutal Jones, Richard Dent. That 85 Bears defense would not have been what it was without him. Eldridge Dickey, first black quarterback drafted in the first round. The Raiders did that. It's John Merritt, shot to him working on the sideline. That's a college football Hall of Famer Longtime head coach at Tennessee State, and now Eddie George. He knows that tradition very well. He says we want to restore the roar here with the Tigers in his third season as the head coach. Jeremiah Love, the tailback. Steve Angeli flips it out to him. Love had a touchdown, the first touchdown of the game. He's run out of bounds there on the far side of the field. Paul, Paul Zora touched on it earlier. The HBCUs, 10% of the people in the Hall of Fame are from, from HBCU schools. So there's great history and tradition among these schools, and certainly Tennessee State uh, among the best of those. I talked to Ed Tutal Jones earlier today and had a great visit with him about his experience at Tennessee State. He went there as a he was a basketball player and a baseball player, never really played football before and <laughs> he told the great story about the equipment guy gives him the gives him his football pants and they're like shorts they don't even come close to his knee and he, he goes out to practice and <laughs> one of his teammates says you're too tall to play football and <laughs> sure enough the nickname has stuck but it's really amazing on that Tennessee State team that he played on in 1974 he was the first pick of the draft pick number four Wayman Bryant went wow. to the Chicago Bears. Two guys, yeah. top four picks from Tennessee State, end up having 11 guys from that team get drafted over the next couple of years. So there's great history and tradition at Tennessee State. And you said it, Eddie George is trying to bring it back. And Rico Flores, two freshmen, keeps his feet, doesn't go out of bounds. The second catch, he's out to the 44-yard line. Jane Greathouse, true freshman wideout. Rico Flores, true freshman as well. That's good for 20 yards. Two young guys who are showing that you know this level of football is not too big for them. Great house was big in Dublin last week, catching the two touchdowns, but Flores also had a good ball game. And you can see that Angeli's getting more and more comfortable finding these guys. Big physical guys. Rico Flores finishing the run after the catch. This is Jadarian Price. Hits the hole with a full head of steam. Strong run. Now inside of Tennessee State Territory, he'll be about a half a yard short. Monroe Beard makes the tackle. So we've seen the tailbacks having success, led by Audric Estime. He's over 100 yards. And Steve Angeli, Jared Parker, told us it was a priority to get him in the game, not just to hand the ball off, Jason, but to get some throws, make some reads, get hit a couple times. And he's 7 out of 9, 88 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, young players have to play. It is critical for young quarterbacks to play. 
these reps are hard to come by. And and Jelly's practiced well. He played well in the spring game, but those are very different experiences than playing in a game. And you saw him early. He was kind of trying to get his feet up underneath him. He's gotten more and more comfortable. He's playing well. Little pump fake. Plenty of time and just throws that one away. In a way, a little mini victory there for not forcing it in downfield, which a lot of young quarterbacks are known to do. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's a lot of levels of decision making when you play quarterback. It's pattern versus coverage. We have this pattern. They're playing a particular coverage. Where should the ball go? But then it's decision making at the end of it. I have the ball in my hand. Is that guy open? And that was a good example there. He didn't like what he had. He had a double move down here to his right. He didn't like it. He didn't get it. He moves. He throws the ball away. You live for another down. Just showing his maturity. Brandon Fisher, defensive coordinator, the son of Jeff <laughs> Fisher. I know you had a chance to talk to earlier today before the game. Uh, makes the catch, but he was more interested in coaching out there. Third down and one for the Irish. And that is an easy first down right up the middle to the 41-yard line. Jabron Payne as they continue to shuffle in different running backs. We've talked about the evolution of this Notre Dame run game. Maybe some more gap runs and counter runs where they're pulling linemen, but that inside zone run has been a signature for them for a number of years. Tommy Reese loved the play. It's been a good play. This Notre Dame offensive line coming off the ball. Give it to one of these backs going downhill. Offensive line, Jason, that's coming off the ball awfully well. Notre Dame run game now over 200 yards. 30 carries for 215. Jabron Payne, the tailback now on first and 10. Corner blitz coming. Got to get rid of it. Does so. Well done. That is a wide open. Jabron Payne inside the 15 and into the end zone goes Jabron Payne. 42 yard touchdown and Jelly to Payne. What did I tell you about throwing the ball to those backs? <laughs> Works pretty well. Yeah. You said it. The corner came off of this side. Tackle picks it up, and Jelly takes a breath, goes to his check down. Payne has been very impressive. We've seen him run the ball inside. He's smooth. He's kind of a slasher. Low to the ground. We've seen him break tackles, but just the vision. He sets up the blocks. Good perimeter blocking by the receivers. Payne does the rest. Extra point up and in. Jabron Payne, first career touchdown at Notre Dame. Said the same for Jeremiah Love, the running back who scored to get it all started way back in the first quarter. Fighting Irish, point total up into the 50s. Steve Angeli says this playing thing isn't so bad. Pair of touchdown passes. Notre Dame up 56 to 3. The premiere of Big Ten Saturday night kicks off next right here on NBC and Peacock with West Virginia taking on number seven Penn State. In Happy Valley, there the Nittany Lions arrive into the stadium. You also see the Nittany Lions there at number seven. And the Notre Dame opponents highlighted there. Tough schedule. Ohio State, USC coming up right here in South Bend. Clemson early November on the road at Death Valley. And Tennessee State will allow that one to back back out or bounce back out through the end zone. So 7.43 left in the game. We take a look at the schedule, and Notre Dame up 56-3. They took care of business last week, 42-3. They were supposed to win these two games. What have you learned about Notre Dame in these last two, last two weeks? Well, last year, Marshall and Stanford tripped them up. Notre Dame was better, and they lost. They didn't play their best football, and that was an emphasis for them. You have to beat the teams that you're, that you're much better than, and really dominant performances last week against Navy and now today against Tennessee State. So they've answered that initial question, but there's still a lot of question marks about this team. You like how they've played in all three phases of their team, but the competition level has been different. So how does this receiving group play when you go against some of the better competition? Is the offensive line as dominant as it's been the last couple weeks? against lesser opponents. Certainly Sam Hartman has proven himself over time as a quarterback at the college level. They got some young running backs. They've played well against lesser competition. How do they do when they go against some of the bigger boys of college football? Those are big questions. And on the other side, on, on defense, can that defensive line hold up? Can they be as dominant as they've been here the first couple weeks? We'll see. Notre Dame brings another linebacker blitz and it gets home. No game right there. And so for as easy as these two games uh, have appeared to be for Notre Dame, the one in Dublin against Navy, rolling right now 56-3, to 
this is a tough matchup next week on the road at an NC State team that's pretty good. Yeah, and let me be clear. The first couple of weeks, they've done everything that they can do in these games. These guys are on the schedule. Let's go beat Navy. Let's go beat Tennessee State. They've gotten after both of them pretty good in all phases of their team. But the, the, the test to go to Raleigh next week against NC State, that's a good football team on the road. So it'll be a different level of competition for Notre Dame. There's no doubt the confidence, particularly for the younger guys, over the first couple of weeks has been bolstered. But they'll have a different test against the Wolfpack. Bryant, eyes downfield and just fires that one away. And no one open after he was forced to leave the pocket. Tennessee State quarterbacks have had a tough go here, Jason. Not a lot of guys open. They've had rushers in their face, and Eddie George has watched his two quarterbacks go, let's see, just 8 for 22 for 68 yards. And I think he's watching his quarterbacks, like he's watching his team, and how do they respond? Do they get rattled? How do they handle the adversity? Do we get stronger as a result of their adversity? Uh, he told us outright it's going to be a tough task, but we're going to grow from this game, and that's the big challenge for them going forward. Matt Salerno touches the ball for the first time today across the 30, little spin, and he's brought down at the 37-yard line. Six minutes left. Tennessee State's first trip to South Bend sees them losing to Notre Dame right now, 56-3. With only two races remaining until a champion is crowned, IndyCar heads to Portland tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Got a new quarterback checking in for the Fighting Irish for the very first time. That's true freshman Kenny Minchie. 6'1", 220 freshman out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. Longtime pit commit. Came to a couple of games last year late here at, the, at the Notre Dame Stadium and Eventually flipped his commitment. Jeremiah Love brought down in the backfield. Right left Hoon Snipes. So first couple quarterbacks looked awfully good, Jason. Got Hartman and Angeli going 22 out of 28 for 324. And now Kenny Minchie playing for the very first time. And this coaching staff is excited to see him play. Really impressive guy throwing the football in practice. They want to see him in some game action. Great opportunity for him right here. To the air out of the backfield he's listening as well jason <laughs> out across the 35 yard line that is chase ketterer first touch for the running back out of new carlisle illinois find those backs they get you in the ball game easy throws he drops back gets his eyes up the field and spit it out wide to his halfback get yourself an easy completion get yourself in the flow of the ball game gino gaduli the quarterback coach knows what it's like to, to get in there and get that first completion. He played quarterback at Cincinnati. Bounced around professionally a little bit. Recently the offensive coordinator at Cincinnati. And Sam Hartman playing the part of cheerleader for his backup quarterbacks. He saw Steve Angeli go 8 out of 11. And now it's Kenny Minchie's turn. Minchie. Davis Sherwood, side end, flipped over to the 47-yard line. Side ends have been much more involved today than they were last week. That's a gain of eight. Impressive by Minchie standing in there with some pressure on him, keeping his eyes down the field and finding Sherwood. Some traffic. Marcus Freeman was thinking about going for it there in fourth and two and probably more than anything else just to see Minchie play a little bit more. He's got to feel good about getting a couple of completions under his belt. Life changes as a college quarterback when you actually have a completion in a game, right? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Everything just feels a little bit different. Oh, it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Goes to the sidelines like, I'm two for two. Yeah. They are punting the ball away here. Bryce McPherson. Fair catch oh. ball by the ball. Comes out. Tayron Johnson. And he got back on it. Sam Hartman says, I'm proud of you. It's your first couple. Inside of four minutes left, Notre Dame leads 56 to three. The commanding lead continues for Notre Dame with 340 left. This summer, both Tennessee State and Notre Dame's football teams welcomed NBCU Academy to their campuses. The interactive sessions highlighted the importance of using stories for both personal and professional growth while allowing the student athletes to share their personal experiences. Notre Dame players learned that many of their teammates had never left their home states as children. Meanwhile, in Nashville, one player shared his struggles with homelessness, a transformative experience for both schools, Paul. 
Zor, thank you. That is well done, and it makes me think these players, and Jason and I both, both played in college, you spend so much time with the X's and O's and the practice and the football part of it. Any opportunity to, to, to break out and listen to, to your teammates talk about their lives outside of football, I think is wonderful. Well, it's so much fun for us to get a chance to visit with some of the players, with Eddie George, the coaches, talking about you know trying to impact these guys' lives as students, student athletes, and as human beings off the football field. And you know we had a talk with Joe Walton, our production meeting. He just come from fluid mechanics. He's a mechanical engineer. You know, and Zora has the great story about the impact of both these universities on these kids and how they're trying to help them grow as human beings beyond just football players. And, you know, it's inspirational to be around this environment and see the impact these people are making on these young men. New quarterback for Eddie George is Demetric Crenshaw, 6'1", 220 junior, out of Columbus, Ohio. Eddie George knows all about that. Heisman Trophy winner in 1995 there, running the ball for the Buckeyes. Now his side started out pretty well. They moved the ball right down the field. Three points on that first possession, but it has been a struggle ever since. Only 7-3 to three at the end of that first quarter, but Notre Dame put up 28 in the second quarter and 14 in the third. Keeping himself again out across the 25-yard line to the 27. And Tennessee State will go back to Nashville, put the pieces back together, and try to come up with that first winning season of Eddie George's three years. The first couple, they've been close, but just under 500. You know, we, we had a similar experience last week talking about the Navy team. So many good things happening there under their new head coach, Brian Newberry. And you play against Notre Dame and you're overmatched, and sometimes you might walk out of the stadium saying, oh, are we doing things the right way? Yes, you are, Navy. Yes, you are doing things the right way. Tennessee State, Eddie George, are you doing things the right way? Absolutely are. You're just overmatched. Notre Dame's better. Learn from this game. Keep battling, keep scratching, keep clawing, and then go get after the rest of your schedule. Matt Salerno, second consecutive punt return, keeps his feet. And big time hits. He does manage to fall forward there at the 37-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines. Check in with Zora. Going across colleges today, the University of Iowa Hall of Fame now includes one of our own. Ann Wes Burmeister, the wife of our teammate Paul, was inducted this weekend. Annie is the first rowing athlete to be inducted. She's the program's first All-American, too. And, Paul, I hope your wife knows just how much you have been bragging about her all weekend, <laughs> rightfully so. An incredible couple days for your family, I'm sure. Hey, Zora, that is so cool. Greeny in, in the truck. Nelly, thank you, guys. I've been obviously thinking about this game a lot, but I thought in my heart in Iowa City, and that is just awesome. Thank you. That is so great. Congratulations, Dan. Incredible honor. She went in with B.J. Armstrong, huh? <laughs> B.J., the second most famous there in, the, in that class, as we like to say in our house. Yeah, but yeah, they've had a wonderful weekend back there in Iowa City. So cool. Uh, to include that, thank you. So glad your kids got her jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool they're back there watching all, all the cool things happening to mom that she earned. And Sam Hartman in a unique spot. It's not very often in the college football season you have this kind of lead, Jason, and you're able to watch the guys that you work with get out there and have a little success and more than anything just get on the field a lot of these guys for the very first time no doubt great opportunity uh, sam played awfully well today now he gets a chance to watch it from the sideline and see a couple of the young quarterbacks get their opportunity he can probably reflect on the first time he got this chance so uh, support of those guys helping them in any way that he can kenny minchie enjoying playing time for the very first time here Notre Dame getting to three quarterbacks today. Sam Asaph, and we've talked about him playing in spring games before. Jason, nice to see him out there. And exhale for Marcus Freeman. Sam Hartman, another great day, 14 out of 17. Couple of touchdowns at the final seconds will tick off, and a couple of former Buckeyes will embrace here at midfield. The Heisman Trophy winner from the mid-90s, and pretty good linebacker Marcus Freeman as well in Columbus. You can tell the respect they had for each other during the week. And one more time. Certainly lopsided from, from Eddie's perspective, but uh, he's got to feel good about what he's building there. And Marcus Freeman, 
after a couple of those losses last year when they should have won. Uh, I think they've learned their lessons about preparing the right way. Big win last week against Navy and did everything they needed to do today against Tennessee State. The challenges are ahead, but they're taking care of business. So Zora right there, and Coach will eventually end up spending some time with Zora. And not to be lost here is the fact that Notre Dame, as you mentioned, started 0-2 a year ago, and now 2-0, as they were supposed to be. And Sam Hartman has just been terrific, and now they can start thinking about North Carolina State next week. And he played there last year in Raleigh, and uh, as promised, Zora with Marcus Freeman. Coach, you said that you want this group at its full potential every Saturday. How did they do with that today? They did a good job for four quarters. Um, you know, we started off a little bit slow. Some uncharacteristic mistakes, but, you know, it's never going to be perfect. But um, it's just an honor to, to be a part of this game. Uh, we made history today. Um, much respect to Tennessee State. Thank you, for you started slow, but eight players finished with scores in the stat sheet. What's that say about the depth? We're, we're a deep team, and um, the ability to get the ball to all these guys, these playmakers, is a challenge. But our offensive coordinator, Jared Parker, and Sam have done a great job of spreading the wealth. The running backs are doing a great job, so we just got to continue to improve. Two weeks in a row that your defense does not allow a touchdown. What impresses you most about their performances? Again, it's it's the relentless effort they play with, the physicality, but the adjustments on the sideline. We saw some stuff today that we wouldn't plan for, and the ability to adapt and adjust Coach Golden, and that defensive staff, and our players have done a great job. As a guy from Ohio who watched Eddie George win the Heisman when he was nine years old, what was it like shaking hands with him at the end of a game, both as head coaches in college football? It's pretty special. Um, I have so much respect for him as a human being, um, obviously as a football player and now as a coach. And so... Uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity, and uh, I told him, man, he's got a, great, a really good team, man. I wish him all the best. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, guys. And not bad. Two games, the team total score, 98 to six. Best thing you've learned about the Fighting Irish here the last couple of weeks. Jason. Yeah, understanding how to prepare against a lesser opponent. They've taken care of business. They've been impressive in all three phases. Be a nice challenge next week going to NC State. And you win 56 to three. You can celebrate this way with the student body. Notre Dame returns to South Bend in two weeks when they take on Central Michigan exclusively on Peacock. Notre Dame wins this afternoon 56 to 3 for Jason Garrett, Zora Stevenson, and our entire crew. I'm Paul Burmeister. Let's send it to Maria Taylor at Penn State.